It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, battle lines. Republicans launch a formal impeachment inquiry into President Biden. The resolution is adopted. Setting up a major election showdown. So what happens now? We're live with the very latest. Then, indefinite suspension. Overnight, the NBA handing down a major punishment for Golden State star Draymond Green for his wild on-court swing. Ooh. Oh, man. We've got the details straight ahead. My kind of man. And here we go. He's classy with a 100% chance of dapper. We're looking back on a year filled with fun. Laughs. Where is Chanel? <laughs> And all around good times. Let's go! So get ready to party today, Thursday, December 14th, 2023. I'm born in Indiana. Today's holy 25th birthday. Three generations from Maryville, Missouri. On our annual girls trip from Columbia, South Carolina. Visiting from Salt Lake City, Utah. Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and Ritter, Louisiana. If I give you a card, I'm on a mother daughter trip to celebrate my graduation. Best things for 70 years. Oh, hi, my dad. Watching in Chicago. Celebrating our birthdays. From Perry, Georgia. All I wanted for Christmas was a trip to New York. From From my daughter, Miss Woo! traditions around here at today. 2023 has been quite the year, kicking off with Savannah and Hoda oh, ringing right. the bell, the New York oh, Stockings. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, yes. <laughs> there were amazing parties on the plaza, mm -hmm. our blockbuster concert series, a parade of stars and celebrity chefs. So sit back, grab your coffee, get comfy, and enjoy a look back at the fun that was 2023. Go on and just like that, you're giving me a good feeling. Something about you pulls me in I get a good feeling You're getting underneath my skin You're giving me a good feeling Take me to a place I've never been I get a good feeling A good, good feeling Woo! We're celebrating our fifth anniversary in a way I never expected. <laughs> yeah. We get to ring the opening bell of the New York Stock Exchange. It's Thursday morning, February 2nd. That, that makes it Groundhog Day. Day. No, it's Thursday morning, February 2nd. That, that makes, makes it Groundhog Day. Day. This Guys, is the best time of the morning. Uh -huh. that is, that's the best time of the morning. Sure. Here's the pop star. I feel like pop starts in your way. Excuse me. I'm yeah. in, enjoy, yeah. fellas. Enjoy. Did you take French in high school? We oui, oui. Oh, you did? Oh, wow. Cool. Did you say poo poo? Is that all you know? <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to Charlie. A little bit. That's all he ever says. Okay. Sure. Can you do us a favor? Sure. Al's doing the weather. Oh, he yeah. needs Where? your assistance. Go over there. <laughs> I'm sweating. There you go. You're my Taylor Swift. Oh, well, I'm your Taylor Swift. I'm freaking wow. out. Wow. Well, that's what's going on around the country. Here's what's happening in, in your, your neck of the woods. Bam! Woo! From 48th Street to 51st Street, my people! Party started. It's time for a today's block party. Oh, and oh, let's head out to Rockefeller Plaza. We really want a flat bag so that. Oh, oh, you're right. Listen, oh you're right. a beautiful day in Sonoma County, California. They literally opened the gates for Buckingham Palace, and yes, we got to go inside. We're here in the brand new Minion Land. <laughs> going to Jazz Fest with Hoda Copy is like going to the Vatican with the Pope. That's right. Absolutely. I'm here in the beautiful city of Paris. This is the greatest assignment I have ever been given. You guys call it a boondoggle. I call it Le Boondoggle. <laughs> we're, ha we're having big FOMO here. Drop the fort. For a 
Cheers. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. It's gonna be sweeter, but if you use oh, fresh lemon, it's real sweet. Too sweet. You're gonna put a little beer in it. I knew it. Just like the high school dance. Oh my gosh, it really is. This is. This is this pretty, this like pretty good. It's good. Oh, I'm so happy. I was excited. That was really excited. Wow. Too. I've always said pasta fagioli. Oh, that's terrible. I know. I'd say fagioli. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there's a joke in there. <laughs> the return of late night. Sorry, today. sorry, sorry. Clean it's up by a pile one. I, no, no, it's too much for one person. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, what is you. this? It's tea. Thank you. Something has yeah. just happened on this plaza, okay. and I'd like to know if it ever happened to you. You ever step in gum thank right God. here? Oh, I have not. Oh, oh my. It's like dirty deep. Elsa. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Whoa, oh, no, no, over here. No, 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 no. <laughs> When we come back, our first Let's, stop. Where is Chanel? <laughs> can you not see through it's it? It's kind of nice. You no. Can, I don't know. Take your thing you off. Can't see, you can't see through it. <laughs> <laughs> I come this close to like cussing <laughs> on live television once a week because of you. Where is Hoda? Hoda, you're throwing your song. Let's go! Today. Yes, I'm so She excited. would like to direct the show. I need to take this. Okay. Uh, can we go to commercial break now? Yes. <laughs> We're back with one of our absolute <laughs> favorites, Brian Cranston. There's buzz about a potential retirement, but Brian is here to set the record straight. Good morning, Brian. <laughs> Boil everything in Ireland. <laughs> boil it. What is it? Boil it. Oatmeal? Boil it. Potato? Boil it. You know when you talked about Ben, what did you tell me? She is my mom. Oh, she knew you'd I always... knew that you would always get back together. Yeah. Because I prayed for 20 years. <laughs> Look at Jennifer. Please welcome to the stage my good friend, Hoda! All right, turn that music up, honey. I can't hear it. There we go. One, two, three. Big. Left, right, left. Right, left, right. Okay. Left, 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 left. Okay. A little shoulder. All my love's for you. Always been the truth. And you taught me never fuck. I can wait for you to wrap your wings around me, baby. Oh, oh my gosh. Cat person or dog person? Well, I like them. Well, we I we had a dog. The only reason we now you're stammering. I know it's a very it's difficult it's question. It's 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 Hello, Lord. You're, 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 you're. Congratulations. Sit down, you animal. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. What? Badass. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Now I don't know what to do. No one. What? Fashion forecast, classy with a 100% chance of dapper. Oh, you look <laughs> looking right. good, my friend. Oh, Perfect. Well, thank you. I'll see your Hufflepuff. What you got? And raise you a Ravenclaw. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Now you're just showing off. I've just been going my whole life waiting for the right tiara. <laughs> and the ultimate Kellyoki sing-along. Who's ready? Let's give it up for Mr. Neil Diamond. <laughs> performance we've all been waiting for. Let's hear it for Taylor Swift. I'm a 
You know what I, I mean? We're real weird right now, but but there's something about uh, true friendship yes, yes. that is on. I was going to say true love. True love. It's yes. true love. It's on this couch. Also, yeah. I wear this My shirt a lot. Shut up. To like touch you and comfort yes, you. Yes, and cry with you. <laughs> that was so sweet. You guys anyway. sing a lot. Oh my god! So yeah. much you. Yeah. We don't sing well, but we sing a lot. Yeah. Like Can we like just goodness. say thank you to Erica? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Erica oh, works on this. Every day of the so year, good. she pulls little so bits of pieces from the show. She's our producer, Erica show. Levin. She's yep. in the control Amazing. room every day. Oh, there's there's love you, Erica. Erica. Yay. Yay. We call this Erica's opus or masterpiece. <laughs> but actually, hold that shot, Jimmy, because we really want to thank everybody who yeah. works behind the scenes yeah. of the show. You can see Jim Gaines and Erica and Tom Mazzarelli and, oh, don't, oh, who's on camera trying to not show us? <laughs> <laughs> they're the folks that make this place yeah. so beautiful and it's fun for us to look at these memories, but yeah. they're part of yeah. our memories. Yeah. And so we just want to say thank you to them. Eric Levins, the editor, Molly oh, Paul. Well done. Wow. Chef's our researcher, kiss. Catherine Carroll, she's sick to death of us from looking yeah. at <laughs> And Patrick McGlynn providing the graphics. Great, Thanks, great. guys. And can we thank everyone yeah. at home? Oh, yeah. Guys, I mean, you yeah. guys are the reason why we're all yeah. here. Um, and so just thank you for being with us each and every yeah. night. That, that was so beautiful. A lot happens yeah. in a year. We had a lot of gracious. A lot happens in a year. And you start going, did that happen this year? Yeah. 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 This? I don't remember this. Yeah, it's Boy, that was we had a lot of fun. Okay. Oh, guys. Love, I you love you guys. guys. I love, love you guys. 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 And Carson. And Carson. Come home.
are back 837 today best sellers and holiday gift ideas you will love from beauty sets to handy tools and DIY kits we've got something for everybody on your list Adriana Brock is here she's our shop today editorial director let us fire up that QR code and dive right in yes I'm so excited by the to way share we're these. bow twins we're bow twins today it is the season to dress up but it's also the season to dress down That's and get right. cozy okay yeah. there's nothing wrong with a little bit of a cozy comfy look this holiday season and this set is it it is a two piece set, which is a great value, Ooh, under nice $60, soft. and it's so soft. Can I tell you something? I've bought higher-end versions of this. This one feels just as luxury, high-end, so comfy, so cozy, and I love that you can wear it together, or you could separate the pieces. It honestly doesn't feel too heavy either, like bulky. It thing. doesn't, and I love wearing this with like a button-down shirt and jeans, too. This is a great layering piece. So okay. I love this. This is a perfect gift if you want to be comfy and cozy. Okay, now this is the brand that I guess all nine-year-old girls are going crazy okay, for right now. Okay, nine-year-olds, but everybody, Everyone, women yeah. of all ages are loving Sol de Janeiro and Orbe. These are great beauty gift sets because the great thing about a beauty gift set is you get a little bit of everything yeah. and it's a value. Another great thing is these are travel size, so perfect oh. for the person who travels in your life or someone who just loves beauty products and can't get enough of them. The Sol de Janeiro, this stuff has sold out over and over again. I mean, does it I, smell yes, like? I, do. I just, I'm it, wafting the studio. Yes, it smells like a vacation in a bottle. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the Orbe, I know you love the texture. I spray. love. I, I'm obsessed with that. This is like the best thing to zhuzh you up your hair. You get a shampoo hair. and conditioner. Yes, you get. This a shampoo. could be your travel set, and you're done. Yeah, exactly. Great, easy beauty. I gift. love that. Okay. This next one. This is for like your husband, who's so hard to shop for, yeah. right? You're like, what do I get him? Think about a practical gift. Yes. This is. A little handy flashlight that's magnetic. Oh. And what? So you can get all those. Wait, you know when you, you drop. see that. Do it again. It telescopes. <laughs> yes, it telescopes. Okay, show them again. And it's so genius because it's got the flashlight I at the you, end. Over we there. see you guys. And then it's magnetic on both ends. So you could pick up all those like random what? things when you're fixing stuff oh around the house. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I and, love this. You know, this is also cool to like keep in your car if you ever, you know, have an emergency, need something. You <laughs> yeah. could pop if it on the hood. Cheerios, we'd be in business. Business, I right? know, I know. If kids. only. Maybe one day. Okay. Well, that's yeah, really, really easy, cool. fun game. Never seen anything like that. Okay. Okay. Another really fun tech find is this electric port a portable hand warmer. So you can oh. recharge it over and over. It warms up your hands really nice and warm. And you don't have to use those, you know, the, the one time use ones. Yes. Those can get wasteful. And they get costly too over time when you're buying so many of them. This is great. It's under $30. You buy it, keep it in your bag, give it to somebody who's always cold. Okay. And when you're in a in a like little emergency, it also doubles as a phone charger. Oh, okay. So you get a two-in-one gift. All right. That's Super awesome. Okay. What's this? Okay. So I don't know if you've heard, but crocheting is all the rage right I now. I have not heard These, that. These, the woobles are taking over social media. Wow. It's really bizarre, but it's really cool. And it's nice for the person who's crafty yeah. or for the kid in your life or the adult who just needs like a new hobby maybe. How cute. Um, this kit comes with everything you need to crochet your own little wooble. Look at how cute it I is. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and they also have um, an email and a text line. How that you old can, for kids? Is, oh, it's as age as 12 and up. Okay, 12 and so up. little so, kids, maybe not Yeah, so maybe for the older older kid in your life. But it's really great. The kit comes with everything you need, and they offer assistance, and they have tutorial videos for everybody that needs a little help. That's super cute. Yes. Wait a minute. Okay. The tiny mic. We do tiny this on mic. the Today Show. We do this on the Today Show. We do it on our social media on Shop Today. If you guys follow us, we're always breaking news with our tiny mics. Yes, Adriana. Breaking what, news. What is this really for, though? This is for the social media person in your life who's obsessed with being on camera in front of their TikTok, in front of their Instagram reels, or if you're breaking news like Savannah Guthrie who has a book coming out Oh, thanks for the plug. I don't plug. know if you guys heard. Thanks for the plug, Adriana. <laughs> so, yeah, this uh, yeah. is really easy. It's $6. It's such a fun stocking it stuffer. It is a cute stock. Yeah. And look, it comes in fashion colors yes, as well. Yes, and plug it in. Have a little karaoke night yes. over the holidays with your family. And like I said, break some news. Thank you, Adriana. You'll be back with more ideas tomorrow. And I you can sure find will. all of these items by scanning that QR code or head to today.com slash Hoda. Jason, come with me. Hoda, Let's what's go. coming up next? Oh. <laughs> You're always Johnny on the spot. All right, get ready to love your mornings. Look who's Aww. here, Allie Love. She's got creative natural beauty hacks. But first, this is Today on NBC.
We are back with our series, Love Your Mornings, and today contributor Allie Love is here. And there are endless beauty products that uh, contain hidden chemicals and a long list of ingredients. So this morning, Allie's going to talk about some basics, some real just natural beauty stuff. Get rid of the chemicals, get natural, so, and yeah. things that you know work. For yeah, you. and I think what's important is whether you are someone who has sensitive skin and you're yeah. trying out new things, or you're someone who's just trying to cut back on the amount of exposure you have to chemicals, <laughs> these are easy hacks that you can find in your kitchen or in someone's kitchen. Coconut oil, especially in the hard form, is one of the greatest yes. inventions. I put it on my kids. I put it on my skin. Mm -hmm. I use it for everything. What do you think it's good for? All the rage. Yeah. Treatment buns. So I actually have it in my hair right now. I have a bun going yes. on. So it, I've lathered coconut oil, put it in my hair, pull my hair back. It's good for two things. One, yeah. hydrating the hair, which is most importantly, yeah. making sure it's, it's shiny, it's healthy. You can see my girl right here on TikTok putting it in, brushing it through, putting it in a bun. And the second thing that it's really good for is you're able to do two things at once. I'm at work right now with you, Hoda. Yeah and I'm getting a treatment in my hair at the same time. So what happens when you wash out the coconut oil? How hair is shiny, feel? healthy, yeah, yeah, softer. Yeah. Like it's really important and it's great for blow dry. Yeah, so you can just take a bunch and I literally just Put it put right it, in. Look at you. Look at just you. put it in there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Laying it down. And it's also shiny. You see my shine, honey? I do you see, see my shine. shine? By the way, I love just pure coconut oil on, on the, the skin. skin. All right, so this is interesting. People are looking for ways to regrow hair. Yes. Now, this is something that's on TikTok, on social media. And I will say, disclaimer on this one, try it. If it works for you, yeah. it works for you. A lot of celebrities, they really live by it, especially like Lala Anthony. This is rice water. So basically, you take rice, you put some water in it, you let it soak for 30 minutes, you put it in a spray bottle here. Wait, this is the stuff that usually you rinse out when you're washing your rice to yes. get rid of all that stuff. This stuff right here, you put it in your hair. It's supposed to promote hair growth. You can put a half a cup of rice, I'd say something around three to two to three cups of water. You let it soak for 30 minutes. You can rinse the rice if you're a little bit concerned, but I'll show you. This is all you do. Let Dump it soak. It in. It's like, I know. Strain some... it, put it in a bottle, and put it on your hair. That's so two funny. Two to three times a week. Because when you have basmati rice, they tell you to wash it three or four times and yes. you dump out that cloudy water. So you don't get you it. You use the cloudy water. Yes, we're using all things in our kitchen. All right, let's make luscious eyelashes. Yes. I oh. love lashes. I feel like a lash and a brow makes a face. You yeah. don't need anything but some good brows and nice lashes. Right. But if you're anything like us, maybe yeah. we don't always want mascara. No, but we, we don't. We want to look like we do. Okay, so, so what do you do? So this one is a new hack that I love. You take a lash curler, you curl your lashes, and you take a little brush. It could be Aquaphor, which <gasps> is the product I swear by. I love Aquaphor. Or petroleum jelly Vaseline. You curl the lash, and then you brush it up. You and put it, Aquaphor on your lashes? On the lash. A little bit at a time. And you can see our amazing producer who's going to come up here, Eden. This is a before and after. Wow. Lift on the lash. That's just it, Aquaphor. And it doesn't get in your eye, it's no, fine. it's all it, good. Yeah, it's just and you're a thin, thin layer. Exactly. Um, continuing with the face, yeah. clay mask. Okay. So I have sensitive, delicate skin. Yeah. I don't always want to put, again, so many chemicals on my skin. No. A clay mask is really good absorbing that extra mo excess moisture out of your face, all of the oil without so, so many a, chemicals. This is a powder? So this is a powder mask. Yeah. This is a clay mask. You add water in, you mix it up, you have Wait a fun. Minute. This is, I do this at Is home. that what this is for? This yes. is for, okay. That's exactly what it's okay. for. Okay, okay. And you just mix it up and then you put it on your face. And I love to see this one working because it shows you your pores. And yeah, you can oil. feel it. Yes. Oh, I know. It's kind of like toothpaste. The menthol, I don't know if it's working, but it's working, honey. Yeah, you it's put working. it on, it dries out. Yes. All right, let's get to a J-Lo favorite. J-Lo favorite. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to look like J-Lo? Basically, this is just what olive is oil. This is olive oil, and for you, maybe you think of a salad. I think of JLo's body. Yes. It's perfect, <laughs> yes. Right? What she does is she lathers on olive oil when she walks the red carpet. Hydration. She does? Yes, hydration of the skin gives you that shine, that glow. It really I does. usually takes it, take it, I'll put a little lotion. I love a scented because I don't want to smell like a garden salad. Yeah. And I'll put it on. Two things about this, I will yep. say. If you are wearing this, out on a night out, be sure to have someone else apply it for you because yeah. getting oil on your clothes is the worst. And secondly, if you're someone in a hot climate, be careful not to wear this out in the sun. Yeah, so you want a burned. night out, you know what I mean? Looking right. fresh, flying. Now, everything. how about a lip scrub? Oh, this is my favorite. Okay, so. You know why? I feel like I think of your girls for this mm. one. All you need to do, you can take that coconut oil yeah. in your kitchen, olive oil, or coconut oil, or any oil that's hard. With put some sugar that's in it? here. Sugar, tea, what is it? A teaspoon of sugar? Yeah. Makes mix the medicine, medicine go, go down. down. Yeah. Well, it makes mix your lips up. hydrated. Yeah, you mix it up, yeah. and then you have this kind of like hard scrub. And you just put it on your lip, put on your rub lips. it on. Uh-huh. Okay, and what's this? What's this bottle right here? Oh, those are essential oils. Okay. So you, you can make it smell inside. good. Make it smell good. Yeah. And again, all of these things are beneficial for anyone who's looking to kind of revamp their makeup wardrobe, take care mm. of their skin, eliminate chemicals out of your kitchen, good. out of your house, out of your Excellent. product. Love it. Love it, Allie. Love it.
this morning on the third hour of today, Oprah's revelation. The star admitting to using weight loss drugs after once calling them the easy way out. What she's saying behind her change of heart. Then later, Oscar winning actor Jessica Chastain live in Studio 1A talking about her new moving film. And last minute gifts from festive flower bouquets you can make at home to presents for less than 50 bucks. Jewelry, tech, and come on, who doesn't love cookies? Today, Thursday, December 14th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third hour of today. I'm Al, along with Chanel, Craig, Dylan. We're all here. Hi, guys. It's Friday Hi. Eve. Friday Eve. Oh, yeah. And we have a huge broadcast lined up for you. And we yeah. are going to begin with a surprise revelation from Ms. Oprah Winfrey. So in a People magazine exclusive, Oprah talked about her recent weight loss. Listen, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's buzzing about it. And she talked about it. She talked about her years-long struggle with body image. So we have NBC's Emily Akeda here with more. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning to you. Well, we know Oprah has been so open yeah. about her journey for really decades. And now she says she's had a change of heart when it comes to those popular weight loss drugs. Uh, not only does she admit to using them, she calls them a gift and a relief. This morning, Oprah looking fit and fabulous on the cover of People and sharing a head-turning revelation. The superstar admitting she uses a weight loss medication as part of her health routine, telling People, I now use it as I feel I need it, as a tool to manage not yo-yoing. Oprah talked to us about her journey that has really spanned decades and how she has been blamed and shamed about her weight. Oprah saying the fact there's a medically approved prescription for managing weight and staying healthier in my lifetime feels like relief, like redemption, like a gift. I'm absolutely done with shaming from other people and particularly myself. While not naming the specific drug she takes, Oprah opening up about the pain she's endured in her weight loss struggles. It was public sport to make fun of me for 25 years. She says her change of heart about weight loss drugs came this summer when she hosted a special about slimming down and made these comments. When I first started hearing about the weight loss drugs, I felt I've got to do this on my own because if I take the drug, that's the easy way out. The star now telling people, I had the biggest aha. I realized I'd been blaming myself all these years for being overweight, and I have a predisposition that no amount of willpower is going to control. Obesity is a disease. Public reaction to her change in attitude about weight loss drugs has been mixed. And I'm happy to see that Oprah Winfrey has joined the bandwagon. You said it was the easy way out. <laughs> early on, making other people question. It's counting points. Which For years, Oprah has been the face of Weight Watchers and is a part owner of the company. She says now using a weight loss drug is only one part of her regimen that includes counting points, regular exercise, eating her last meal at four o'clock and drinking a gallon of water a day. Health top of mind for the media mogul ahead of her 70th birthday next month. Wow. By the way, yesterday Oprah received a big honor. Take a look at this. Beautiful. A painting yes. of her is now on display at the Smithsonian oh, National Portrait gorgeous. Gallery. Really stunning. Done by Chicago-based artist Sean Michael Warren. And you can read the full interview with Oprah in the new issue of People Out Friday. The other thing she said that really stood out to me mm -hmm. is like she just leads her life with gratitude. She says she wakes up every day and goes to bed every day saying thank you. Mm. Yeah, Absolutely. She's in a good place. She's in, in a, a good place. place. Yeah. I will tell you, I'll be honest with you. So when we were planning our 9 o'clock meeting or we were talking about what we were going to talk about today, I said, oh my gosh, we're with Oprah and weight loss and there was something in me that was like ah oh, we start the show with Oprah and her weight loss yeah. but then I pulled back a little bit and this, you were on earlier this morning mm -hmm. and I was downstairs with the crew and hair and makeup and all the folks and when you started talking and that story came on it's very hard to get the concourse to pay attention right yeah. everybody you are watching it you start talking about it or you have a friend who did you know it's just one of those things where everybody is it transcends yeah. just Oprah I mean it is about Oprah but we are all kind of well, look, the, well, the culture is obsessed. It's such a relatable topic. Yeah. Yes. And the fact yes. of the matter is, whatever you need, it, 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 this is not an ends. It's just a means. Yes. Look, I, no secret, 22 years ago, did a gastric bypass. But you still have to put in the work. Yeah. You still have to yeah. do the exercise, change your lifestyle. Uh, so good for her. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and a holistic other approach. People. Yeah. And being honest about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. All right, well, now we're going to take a turn to a story that a lot of parents need to hear. There's a new report that attempts to answer the question, is social media harming kids? Mm. The National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine looked at, get this, 
15 years of studies. Mm -hmm. NBC News tech correspondent Jacob Ward is here with what they found. Also, some guidance perhaps for parents who are watching or listening. I was reading through some of the top lines yeah. of, of the survey. It's fascinating. I, you, you would know better than me, but I think this is the, the first comprehensive look mm. at 15 years worth of research. That's right. I mean, it is. It's, it's an overall look at everything the science has been able to figure out about social media and the, the effects that it can have on kids. You know, uh, what these researchers essentially did is brought in the world's top experts on this stuff and had presentation after presentation of everything they've ever studied. Now, the disappointing part, I just want to get this out of the way quick, is that they really say in it, we cannot give you hard and fast rules as hmm. parents. Okay. What they're essentially saying is the landscape is too complicated, it is so incredibly hard to study, and social media companies are very, very loath to share their mm -hmm. data, so that makes it hard. Yeah. But when you dig into this, I mean, it's almost 300 pages, there are some amazing top line sort of takeaways. One okay. big one is there can be benefits it turns out that it doesn't all have to be doom and gloom. Really? This is somebody who, as the doom and gloom correspondent, mm -hmm. like it's coming in here and telling you that there's some benefits is a big thing. So, so for me, you know, one of the big takeaways, for instance, is that the style of usage, like whether you post as a kid, right. as opposed to passively scrolling, it turns out that posting can have good self-esteem benefits for kids. More engagement. Yeah, you know, you've got you've got a hobby and you want to show it off, a dance movie you want to show it off. That can be positive, whereas just passively scrolling can be bad. Hmm. The other part they say is that as a parent, you should watch for essentially a cycle of of what they call displacement. It, you know, if you're pulling back from from kid from if your kid is pulling back from their friends or yeah. pulling back yeah, from yeah. regular meal times or pulling back from sleep, that's a moment to really get involved and, and take a look because there's a cycle in which you know social media use tends to beget depression, tends to beget more social media use, okay. that kind of stuff. And they say there's a big difference among different types of kids. It's mm -hmm. not going to be the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. So you know, the, the so for me like. Like, you know, for, for all of us who are parents and trying to figure yeah. out what to do, yeah. right? I'm over here like... I know, right? Tell me something. Tell me something, please. So here's here's one that I thought was really interesting. With young kids, one of the recommendations that are coming out of this, and again, they're not landing with two feet on everything, but they're saying you should try this out. One of them is young kids, you should be guiding them through it. What's they're young? Like so under 12. Okay. Under 12, okay. right? You should be shoulder to shoulder with them guiding them through it, not just letting them scroll and scroll, but yeah. going through it as a family activity. And that when you do that, that in later life turns out to keep them from, from taking risky behaviors on them. Oh. That's what one of the things that is good. But it doesn't work with teenagers. Hmm. Once they get into the teenage years, 13 and beyond, what they say is instead you gotta have really transparent and concrete rules but otherwise, you have to allow them mm. some independence. Mm -hmm. And if you get angry at them and decide that as punishment, you're going to take away their phone, yes. that turns out to drive them into the kinds of risky behaviors oh, that you wow. want oh, them to no. avoid. Yes, I know. It's so, so hard being a parent. It's hard to be a parent. What are you supposed to do? Being a kid now. <laughs> I mean, so wait, if thing. you can't take it away, then that's the only thing they care about. Then what is the punishment? Well, the punishment <laughs> may not be the thing. Instead, you got to get into a routine of, you know, for instance, let's say you're going to have something like a, you know, a, a container at the front of the house. Right, goes where after there. a certain hour it goes in there, or that's you, when that's you come in, oh, we, had a, we literally had a safe. Oh yeah. man, exactly, exactly, a time safe, right? Yeah, exactly. But it wasn't a punishment. It was no, at it was the just end of the that day was the rule. Well, that's the what they say is that you know you need concrete sort of takeaways like that. But you know okay. the big thing here, you guys, is that these 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 researchers essentially say we need these social media companies mm -hmm. to open up their books to us. We need to be able to see the world that they I do, agree. you know, the same way they do. Yeah. And they say we need to create some international standards, not just American standards, but yeah. international mm -hmm. standards in the same way that we. We have standards around food safety and you know uh, uh, thinking about all those things so that we can protect yeah. against abuse. How do you protect against abuse? This stuff. How do you even do well, that? this is the thing is that is that they essentially say you know we're going to need to to from the very beginning of life be in this place where we guide them through it and where we as parents also you know don't get caught just scrolling sure. mindlessly or ourselves right. or letting it affect our mental health ourselves mm -hmm. so you know i really encourage people to take a look at this study because although it does not give you concrete art and festivals yeah. it's a lot of ideas for how you know, it's funny my, my granddaughter literally five months old and mm -hmm. she was sitting in, in her little seat in the, on uh, in the kitchen and the tv was on and i noticed her just oh, naturally yeah. oh yeah, oh, yeah. Flipping bright out. colors like, i had to turn flashy. that off no i mean i remember one of the studies showing that that you know a kid will look at, you know will play with their favorite tor toy for about 30 minutes but you give them a screen they'll go oh. 60 90 way beyond the and point of fun out. you know completely there's something tune else out going everything on else around them. that's yeah. absolutely right like i just went to the doctor's office okay jake, thank you <laughs> and to jake's point by the way folks again it's a 
comprehensive report. So we've, what we've done is we've put some tips. We put the report on our website, today.com. Check it out. So you can spend more time on screens. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Lock yourself in a closet and scroll through it. Jake, seriously, that was Thank really, you, really, that was really good. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, coming up, it's today's checklist. We're going to open up the medicine cabinet. Why well, it shouldn't really be. You shouldn't keep medicine in the medicine cabinet. But we're going to tell you what you should always have on hand and why we might be storing them all wrong. And then we are so thrilled. We've got Academy Award winner Jessica hey. Chastain live from Studio 1A filling us in on a dramatic new role. All that and more coming up on the third hour today. and the flu, of course. So on today's checklist, we're going to go through everything that you should have at home to be prepared for your basic health emergencies. And here to share what we need to know, our NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. Good to have you. Nice to be here. So for, I mean, before we mm -hmm. kind of dig into what we should have and what we shouldn't have, let's talk about where we, sh where we should be and where we should not be storing our medicines. I think that it is human nature to think of medicines belonging in the bathroom medicine yes. cabinet, yes. right? That's where you're getting ready and whatnot, and I will still remember the smallest bathroom ever in New York City, right? <laughs> not, a bit, not a great place to have your medicines because of the humidity from the shower, oh. the temperature fluctuations. Huh. A lot of medicines actually are very sensitive to that. Oh. I, so really you wanna do it in more of a cooler, drier spot. I usually do mine in the kitchen cabinet away from the stove okay. and the other thing to remember too is to have all medicines high up yeah. away from the reach of children got it CDC recommends that we update our medicine cabinets clean them out twice a year oh. and I was behind and that's why I I pitched this story again because mm. mine is overflowing yeah. and yeah. it's time I'm way I know. behind too. Like, time. I try to balance it on a shelf and then yeah. I look at the date and I'm like oh, it's it's, and, like, and you're digging through yeah exactly so what are some things that we should definitely have in our medicine okay cabinet? so we talked about cold and flu season we are all aware that oral decongestants are maybe not so beneficial or effective anymore so what can you use instead always have a nasal steroid at hand you can also have a nasal antihistamine spray mm -hmm. the phenylephrine which is that oral decongestant is still available as a spray but only for three days not longer it okay. can cause rebound also <coughs> taking an oral antihistamine because a lot of times that that congestion is really mm -hmm. just from allergies an absolute must are, is to have pain and fever Fever reducers. Okay. We have acetaminophen and ibuprofen, and then antacid. <laughs> I which swear is, by this. My dad called it. Uh, it was bromo seltzer when I was yes, little. Yes, exactly, really? exactly. And it's the best. But always for an upset world. stomach. So these are kinds of the things that are definitely for emergencies and or everyday use. Yes. Well, not forever, but depending Works on who you are. Too. Exactly. There this you go. Good. Thank All right. you, Dylan. So in light of being prepared beyond medicine, what yes. should we have? Okay. So this is the little like your your go bag for okay. at home emergencies. Obviously, you want to have band aids, mm -hmm. rubbing alcohol, but also cleaning with you know a cool soap and water is perfectly fine. Okay. Um, a topical cortisone for bites and itches. And okay. Some irritations, hot and cold packs. I don't know about you, but I have a teenager who gets injured every all week in sports. <laughs> That's true. And it's we true. have these in all shapes and sizes. Yep. Um, bacitracin or some sort of antibiotic ointment is okay. an absolute must. Uh, a tweezer for, yep. for so splinters. Are you kidding? Splinters and 
What? Ticks. Oh, ticks. Oh, I'm over here thinking like gray exactly. hairs. No, what? I'm sorry. I put you on the spot. Yeah, you were like eyebrows. And, and your eyebrows. <laughs> and your eyebrows, Chanel. Ticks. Um, and also a well working thermometer. Yes. Which, Wait, do yes. you? Which one do you like? Because there's okay. like so many. The so, on the oh my God. If I, I'm going to say this on national TV. Go, you, go for it. Work. My daughter the other day was like, we have two temperatures in the house. It's either you're fine or oh my God. I never <laughs> had I'm, a good temperature. Yeah. I never had a good thermometer in, yeah. in, when the kids were little. I put my hand, I mean, I'm a doctor. Yeah. The back of my hand. Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, you can use the, the ear, the tympanic membrane one, but actually under the arm oh. and rectal for the little ones are okay. the most accurate. Okay. And these can go under the arm. Just, these can go right. under the arm. Okay. Exactly. Okay. okay. Something I've, as I'm now mentioning, second time being a grandfather, I've got, yeah. now I've got to start worrying about stuff for toddlers so, or for children. Yeah. Exactly. So here I, I have a couple of things for, for kids that, that I think are important. Liquid bandages. I actually oh. never used this on my kids when they were little, but yeah. they can be really effective. I was when, wondered about that. I know. How do you know when to use a liquid bandage versus just versus a, a well you can you either one. How about this? There's two different kinds of liquid bandages. Uh -huh. One is like almost like suture that if you're bleeding, not a wise thing mm -hmm. to do. But right. for small cuts, yeah. you clean, you oppose the two edges, uh, you put the liquid it on it. Exactly. It it's and then it kind of will go like away on its own and then no like pulling off. Oh, okay. um, well, that's good. Pediatricians love also safely nasal irrigation as well as neti mm -hmm. pots, but remember with sterile water. Right. And I'm putting cough and cold medicines up here on the children's pedestal to make a very important point. Cold, cough and cold medicines are generally not recommended for kids. I'm sure you guys will remember sure. your pediatrician saying, mm -hmm. you know, if you do a fever reducer, if they're uncomfortable, but you have to read the label on these things. Mm -hmm. Some of the ingredients in, in a, a capsule, for example, will contain acetaminophen, a cough suppressant, a decongestant, mm -hmm. other things. Yeah. You have to read the label and yeah. know exactly what age is appropriate, mm -hmm. if it's appropriate for your children, mm -hmm. and that's why we have it on here, really, to, to make a point Should about you have that. have one of those little Snot stuff or snuck, you know. Suckers. Love the snot yeah. sucker. The the oh. one you plug in, the electronic one. They have a you plug it in. It's an absolute wow. game changer. I did the nose freedom you, where you suck it out. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that always no, kind of grossed me out. It's like a vacuum for a kid. I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to mention, really important. <laughs> there were, we know that there's, there's a, a shortage of prescription medicines yes. now yes. in this country. Um, and so if you can, you can ask your doctor for a 90 day supply if your insurance will cover it. Smart. Make sure that you you have, especially for meds that you really don't want to stop abruptly mm -hmm. from one day to right. the next, you right. can really get into some medical trouble right. there. Dr. Um, Dr. Thank, you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll stop talking about that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oscar winner Jessica Chastain is here live to fill us in on her new film, holiday traditions, and more. And then later, we are blooming with gift ideas. Ooh. How to make beautiful holiday I bouquets that you can give away, or honestly, you can just keep it for yourself. <laughs> we'll be right back. I love it when you guys do. This morning we are catching up with Hollywood star Jessica Chastain. She dazzled us in her role as a Southern housewife in The Help. And last year Jessica won the Best Actress Oscar for this magnificent portrayal of legendary televangelist in the film The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Well now Jessica stars opposite actor Peter Sarsgaard in Memory about a surprise connection between a single mom and a man who has dementia. Now you remember me? No. I guess people 
change after many years. But we didn't go to school together. Oh, I remember. <laughs> you really don't remember me? No. Wow. Yeah. And Jessica yeah, so Chastain good. is with us this morning. Good morning. She's ready, so She's ready to get him in oh. that park. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I love watching you and everything you're in. I can't imagine the roles that come your way. And, you, you know, you can pick and choose. But what was it about this movie that you really liked? Oh, I love, well, first of all, working with Peter Sarsgaard, I was really excited about. I hadn't had the opportunity to work with him mm -hmm. yet. Uh, Michel Franco, I think, is a very important filmmaker. He's a Mexican filmmaker. He does all of his movies, super low budget. We don't have any trailers. I did mm. my own hair. I got my own costumes. Wow. Oh. That you yeah. went to Target? Yeah, I went to Target. I went to Goodwill. I like really? really like got my character together and it was such a nice change of pace after all the makeup of the eyes of Tammy yeah. Faye and like the Oscars and you know all the the glamour. Yeah. It was it makes it good though. Very different. Right. Yeah. So talk about the relationship between Sylvia and Saul. Yeah, uh, so Sylvia's, um, she works, uh, she's a caretaker, and she works at an adult daycare center. She's also an AA. Okay. And she goes to this um, high school Hi. reunion, and oh, Saul starts staring at her, and then he, she leaves, and he follows her home. Oh, and she's tr trying, she has these memories of her past she wants to forget. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And little does she know is Saul has early onset dementia, oh. and he has all these memories he's trying to remember. Oh. Wow. And so it's about the how they know each other and wow. how they can help each other. That's good. You, know, you mentioned this was a, you know, a low budget film. You went shopping for your own your own clothing. Does that does that help you get into the character more? In that you 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 almost have to kind of put yourself in her shoes. Like what would this person be wearing, especially on on you know not a, a glamorous budget? Mm. Absolutely. I mean, every aspect of that, because I think about how much it, everything costs. Mm -hmm. I thought about, um, well, what does she do? We actually worked in an adult daycare center here in New York, and, wow. I, and the residents in the film are actually living there. Wow. I worked there. I would feed them lunch yeah. and play games and help them pick out their outfits for the day. Wow. And I really studied her. I, the, my coworkers um, in the film work there. So we thought about how much money does Sylvia make every month? Good. What can I budget? Where would I live? All of these things I took into account. And of course, that just makes the character feel more real to you when you're playing it. Mm -hmm. Full immersion. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, a, that's wow. <laughs> um, you said something recently at a film festival that, that caught, caught our attention. You described yourself as quite rebellious. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, that that sounds like me. <laughs> how does that how does that help you shape which roles you take and which mm. roles you pass on, or does it? Well, I think you know if everyone's coming out at me and saying you should do this, yeah. I'm gonna have a moment of like, why? Mm. <laughs> why? Yeah. Or if everyone's in, if everyone's like you shouldn't do it, That's then I might give it a second look, because I have found in our industry it can be. Um, Val Kilmer once said this to me. He came to, I, I went to Juilliard and he came to speak at the school and he said, Hollywood isn't unimaginative, they're anti imagination. Wow. And uh, so I've really come to understand that in my career, I want to to shock people with my choices and do the opposite of what someone might expect from me so they can never have this idea of Jessica does yeah. this, this and that's the box what she'll you always in. do. I'm yeah. going to break out of the box. All right. That's great. So good. You certainly are with this role. I know. <laughs> so good. Jessica, Jessica thank thank you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. you guys. Thank you. Memory opens in New York and L.A. on December 22nd and expands on January 5th. Okay. I'm expanding right now. Uh, <laughs> coming up, if you're looking for a thoughtful gift for your buds, we're going to show you how to make a beautiful holiday bouquet. Then later, listen up. Shop all day. We've got fun gifts for kids and adults, including cookies. Hey, all Third oh, hour yes. will be right back. We're all ears. We got their phone in
most festive time of the year. Look at this. And one of the easiest gifts to give may just be beautiful flowers. So here to show us how to spruce up our bouquets for the holidays is Christina Stimbel, founder and CEO of Farm Girl Flowers, a national flower delivery company. So you too can enjoy some of these things. We always Welcome. love it when you come. I was just about to say, oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. So you. great. So love today you. you're going to show us how to make bouquets to bring to perhaps a holiday party or yes. sometimes if you just want to do it for yourself. Absolutely. You Both know? ways. We're going to yeah. do two ways today. Okay. So Farm Girl, we created a new way of designing flowers that we okay. think anybody can do. Okay. You're going to prove it today, okay? okay? Okay, so Chanel, you're on your own, and All you guys right. get to tag team it. Preview. Okay. So, All right. first thing you're going to do with this pile in front here, long arm people, uh -huh. pick a couple from each that flower. Has, you want about great. 10 flowers in your hand. <laughs> yes, we need. Awesome. Really thank you. Oh, so beautiful. Yep. So, for exactly. people at home, can they yeah, get yeah. these via delivery? Yes, yep. Because these, um, these are beautiful. At farmgirl.flowers.com right. or farmgirl.com. Okay, uh, you I'm can listening. get these online, or you can make them yourself, okay. going right. to your local floor. Well, absolutely. Or, yeah, local, okay. local store, grocery store. All right, guys. Okay, you're just bundling them in your hand. Very okay. easy, just okay. like this. Okay. Now you're going to stagger the stems a little, just about like about four inches from top to bottom. Okay. Okay. Stagger. And that's all you do. Just okay. keep it like that. Now we're going to we're going to combine Al okay. and Chanel. Uh huh. And then down there, you're going to do the same thing that we're doing over here. Okay. You're just going to cross it, crisscross applesauce. Just cross like this, I'm going to show you. Just like oh, this, you're going to cross gonna it like this. Oh, I'm going to cross this. Just make an X, make an X. Okay. Just like that and put it on the table. Like this? Just lay it on the table. Yep. So we, me and Craig crisscross. Lay it on the table just like that. Yeah, okay. perfect. Okay. You did it. Just okay. keep no, the X. Okay. So keep the X. No, you're not screwing it up. Just like that. Okay. okay. That's all you're going to do. Okay. Right. okay. Now you're going to take the greens. Craig, I'm changing my Chris. Oh. You have two bundles of greens. Oh. take both. One of you take this bundle out. Okay. And Dylan, you take that bundle. Sorry, Craig, to leave you out. And you're going to take both. Okay. Yeah. Now you're going to crisscross those. Just split it in half. Crisscrosses. Did you cut yourself? No. Yep. Okay. Crisscross the greens. And crisscross the greens right on top of the flowers. Just okay. lay them right on top of the flowers. Of right the there. Why are you having the door? Me and then <laughs> they're tangled. It's totally fine. They're really resilient. Yep. Well, Make an X. Working together really I know. Well. An X right on top. Yep. Okay. Just like that. Perfect. Okay. Now you're going to do the same thing with one more round of flowers. Okay. Do the same Both thing. Ten flowers in your hand. Yes. Since you don't approve of the way I do things. Okay. That team over there. They're Breakfast with the Breakfast with There might be a little contest going here. Yeah. So, yep, same thing. Ooh, okay. How many did you say we should get? About 10 in your hand. One, two, three, yep. four. Yep, stagger the okay. stems just right. like that. I mean, Craig, if this yep. sells for him, okay. this is fun, right? This yes. is so yes. fun. Yeah. It's therapeutic. Yes. yes. Now put an X on top of that. Okay. Yep, just right on top. Oh, this way. Yep, just like that. I'm going to okay. steal mine here for you. Okay. Just like that. Uh, how is right? this going to turn into something Okay. Beautiful? I know. What now, is this going to be? Watch this. This is okay. this is like magic, you guys. Okay. okay. So you just lift it up uh -huh. just yeah. like this. And look at that. You have a 360 degree <gasps> wow. all the way around. Just lift it up like that? Yeah. yeah. Look, it's oh, wait, done. Look at this. So all you would do to make this then is you would just cut it so the bottom stems are right above the lip of the vase. Uh -huh. Yes. And it becomes a centerpiece if you want to stay home with it and yes. do it for yourself. That's beautiful. But we're literally going to wrap this up oh. and show you how you can take the best hostess gift this is with you. This is what they look like. Magic of TV already done, tied here, right? Yes. Okay. So, okay. We're gonna, who wants to do this one with me? Craig, you kind of got Craig, left out. You wanna do this one? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you're gonna take your favorite wrapping paper, just like that at home. And oh, wrapping paper. Yeah, wrapping paper, just any of it that you have. Uh -huh. Layer it with some tissue, yes, like this. Yes. So we have a couple different styles here. And then you can make it shorter like this, but we're gonna do an easier one, okay. just a burrito roll. Oh, We've all oh, rolled burritos okay. before, That's right? Cool. So you're gonna put it in the right-hand corner uh -huh. of the wrapping paper. You can do it, put it this way though, just like this. Okay. okay. And then all you're gonna do is take the paper, and you're going to fold it over, yes. and you're going to roll it, and then that tuck the so end. Pretty. We'll do the whole thing at once, though. Oh. Do the whole oh, thing. Take, yeah, okay, here you go. So let's do this together, okay. Yeah, fold the bottom end, pick up. You can do it with roll. that, and then wrap, roll all the way around like this. And then can we put a little ribbon on it? Yes. Then you oh, can yes. take all your ribbons and little baubles. See how we even took oh, like a, a little bottle, bottle opener. Oh, you can take well a little. Done. Christina, this oh, is one of my favorites. A bottle opener is a great yeah. idea. Really and then you appreciate. have a little hostess script. We even have little tea towels you can wrap around it if you oh, want. Yeah. And you have a hostess script yeah. for it. Wow. And then my favorite this. thing, oh, one yes. last thing, you take your oh, little time, bits Christina. and leftovers. We're out of time. Oh, oh shoot. Okay. Well, we um, cut her off. She could have got it in. Oh, oh, look, you take the leftovers and put yeah, them on gifts. That's it. Oh, you perfect. still to come. Shop that's all day. Gift, Shop too. all day. Gifts for less than 50 bucks, like jewelry and the box to keep that jewelry in. And later, we're revved up because country star that's John right. Party is here in the studio. He's going to perform his new holiday hit. 400 horsepower sleigh, third hour of today, right back after this. This is our.
We are back with Shop All Day. Whether you've finished your shopping or maybe you're just getting started for the holidays, there is still time to get a gift that everybody's going to love. Shop All Day contributor Chassis Post is here with gifts that are all under 50 bucks. Yes. That, importantly, will still arrive in time for Christmas. Oh, you just have okay. to scan that QR code to check it out. Chassis, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to hook you up. Let's do These it. These are some great gifts. Okay, starting with Craig. We, you had mentioned, yes. you might have seen these before. I have these coasters. Yes, these are from Potter barn and they're Ooh. the alphabet coaster oh. and I mean feel at the weight nice. of these. Those are nice. Yes. It's a nice big circle. Yes. It's a big coaster. Yeah. And they're made out of marble and wood. It they're rich. handmade. It looks luxe. Yeah. yeah. And you get a set of four mm -hmm. for around twenty dollars and then you can personalize it. You can get mm. your Can't initial yep. yeah. which yeah. I mean I think it protects your furniture mm -hmm. and looks stylish when you have people it's over. Perfect right. gift to take if it you're is. going to you always need Oh yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Yes. perfect. Who doesn't like a good cookie? Tell oh my not. gosh. Okay. Do you guys Anyone? know yes. the Levin or Levain Why, yes, cookie as I was calling them wrongly before? Oh my gosh, so these are known as the world's best cookie. Mm -hmm. They're uh, in a bakery in New York City. I've That's seen people the around the block, yeah. people travel mm -hmm. from, to New York to just to have these That's cookies. And now they can come to you. They can, shipping nationwide. I mean, check them out. No, Six so ounces. That is like a meal. And it's so, it takes so me like good. three days to eat one. And they're incredible. And, you know, crispy on the outside, gooey on All the, the inside. Much like Craig. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and these start at $29. You don't have to travel to New York. Send it to the door. Good. Okay, I mean, sure I know. All right, well, I will tell you about these while you're enjoying the world's I best cookies. My steamers. The, cookies. the like nano my steamer. Yeah. Have you tried the nano no, steamer? No, what is it? How does it work? Okay, so <laughs> this is a Shop Today team favorite. There's an ode to the nano steamer on today.com okay. because our team member tried it, and it has a nano ionic steam that is mm -hmm. 10 times more effective. It opens out. those pores. Oh my gosh, I thought it was a skies. It also comes with a what? I didn't she hear thought that. it was a clothes steamer. Oh my God. She's like going this like this. This is for your face to oh deep my God. clean. That's Get, why I said I swear by steamers because I've seen my Oh clothes. yeah, well that too, but it's it actually it's a three in one. Yeah. You can use it as a towel warmer or a humidifier. And guys, it also comes with a blackhead remover. Mm. Uh, Kit here. Yummy. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, $39. Wait, that's a win. It's that's... such a win. I mean, it's like a spa experience at it? home. You well, you don't want to put it too moving. much, but, but okay, yeah, okay. You, you sit above it. Spa so experience at home. You can travel with it, yes. put it in your bag. Right. Mm -hmm. These are one yeah. of Oprah's favorite things. Yep. I think they're so chic. They're velvet. There's a it. secret compartment oh. behind oh. here that's where you can hooks for your necklaces. And it's just a gorgeous way to organize your jewelry. Throw it in your bag and go. Under $25 in such cute colors. Well, okay. You got a discount on this one. I sure do. This is a brand I'm really digging, Ink and Alloy. And look at these stretchy, oh, rectangular bracelets, 30% off. So normally they are $33. Mm -hmm. Today, around well, good 23 you, you. So good. And you can stack them up, you know, at that price. You can, like, dress up a white T-shirt. Totally you, you can. Yeah. And, I mean, arm parties, That's you cute. know, mix it in with your stack arm like oh, Chanel's yeah, done. Cute. Very so okay. just And really quickly, uh, for the kids. Okay, yeah, for, the kids. for the kids. Yeah. Guys. Play Zoom. All right. Play Zoom. It is a kid's smartwatch oh. that comes with a matching headphone. I oh. mean, I got to say, I would want this, but you learn and play at the same time. So these cool. look into that. Oh, wow. So you can do STEM, you can learn to tell time, and guess that. what else? You don't have to hook up to a credit card or oh, even That's the internet. Even so they're That's safe. Yep. And so kids are having so much fun, they That's don't really even know cute. they're learning. When they travel, That's, That's awesome. awesome. I know. Thank these you are so good much. Times. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. To get these Thank deals, you. just scan the QR code or go to today.com slash shop. And if you want to save more money, download our Shop Today Savings Browser extension to get exclusive codes and coupons on over 40,000 retailers. All you got to do is go to today.com slash savings and install it. All right, coming up next, we are head over boots. Excited for this one. Country music star John Party is here to perform his new Christmas song that you will be singing all day long. We'll be right back.
The City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. All right, we are back with a country music star, multi-platinum award-winning singer, songwriter, John Party. You may know him from his infectiously catchy hits like Head Over Boots and Night Shift. Well, now he's out with his first ever holiday album called Merry Christmas from John Party. And this morning he is here to perform a holiday original. There's a good chance you know this one, folks. <laughs> good to have you. Good to be back. Merry Morning. Christmas yeah, to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You are having quite the moment right now. You're on a world tour. And I just heard that you are the first Californian, native Californian, to be inducted into the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, That's a big deal. Yeah. It's just fun to be a part John of the Party. Opry. Yeah. It's a great place. So, um, it's a... Uh, the oh, you yeah, guys. <laughs> There's a video. Yeah, that was yeah awesome. no, I mean, that was a special night, and I'll never forget it. They got family, country music family. Yeah. Well, my family loves your country music. Your your songs are fun. Head over, like, we're just singing it in the car all the time. But now you've got a holiday album. Yep. Is it fun to put together? Like, how do you pick and choose which are your favorite songs? I had to listen to a lot of Christmas songs, but I think I found this list we got of this album is really special. And... It's fresh. That's what yeah. I wanted. I didn't want to do all the over-covered stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. By the yeah. way, usually folks just bring in one or two folks with them. Thank you so much. <laughs> and they've been up early. I yeah, walked in and they've been I mean, this, this is impressive. It, it's a party it. party. We yeah. try to keep it real. You yeah. know? We, there's not a, an Apple computer in this band, is it? Really? All right. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Real I, love, I love that. Performing 400 horsepower sleigh. John Party, take it away. All right.
you all the stuff. I know you guys work every day. We got to keep going. House man, I love it. Oh my goodness. Merry Christmas from John Party. It's out right now. You can also catch him on his Mr. Saturday Night World Tour. That's also happening now. Man, that was amazing. Third hour tour. Right back after this. Dave Coulier taking a look back at Full House. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, two stars, the color purple, Fantasia Barino and Danielle Brooks. All right. Folks, we will see you back here tomorrow. Special love to our crew. They yes. are amazing. Every morning, get into the holiday spirit with today. We're going to spread some holiday cheer. Some added inspiration to give back this holiday season. We are launching today's toy drive. Holiday gifts for everybody on the list. That is delicious. Our biggest holiday crowd I'm yet. Yeah. You can be my happy place. Three, two, one. Make today your home for the holidays. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. The lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on Today. Today, two of the stars of The Color Purple, Fantasia Barino taylor and Danielle Brooks. Plus, Food Network's Jeff Morrow whips up an easy weeknight meal. And we're talking about Oprah on the cover of People magazine revealing she's been using weight loss medication and saying she's done with the shaming. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, so up, it's today with Hoda. And Jenna. It all starts right now. Hi, guys. It is Thursday, 14th day of December. Happy to see you. Happy to be with you. We are so excited. Oh, we're so excited. Because I know that Hoda is wearing pink, but... It's, it's all it, about purple today. Today's the color purple day here on our show. We're so excited to have Danielle Brooks and Fantasia Barino taylor with us. Ugh. Two of the stars, two of the Golden Globe nominees I are mean, here. They're nominated before the film is out. This, which was first a book by Alice Walker, of and then has turned into all these different iterations has meant Broadway so much, shows, yep. Broadway shows, other films, so much to so many, including these two women. But what I love 
is that we're going to tell you things about these women hmm. that you may not know. And yes. I think that will be so much fun. They are they are both. I mean, and one of the two actually first turned down the role yes. for very personal reasons, but came full circle and is now, um, I'm sure, I just can't wait to hear all yes. about it from we're her. We're really looking forward to all it. All right. Speaking of the color purple, we know it's produced by Oprah. And guess who's on the cover of People magazine? Our girl, Our Oprah. Girl, Oprah. So in, in it, she talks about a lot of things. Yeah. But one of the things she reveals is that she has been taking mm -hmm. a unspecified anti-obesity medicine, mm -hmm. which has led to how, how great she looks. I mean, she you know people have been asking, what's, what's Oprah doing? What's she doing? For years, she's been doing Weight Watchers stuff. And she's been counting points and exercising and hiking and all those things. Yes. Like we've seen. That. And she loved, I mean, remember she brought us fruit from her garden. She likes she organic. She's very healthy. But, but she shared this, and this is important. She said, the fact that there's a medically approved prescription for managing weight and staying healthier in my lifetime feels like relief, like redemption, like a gift, and not something to hide behind and once again be ridiculed for. I'm absolutely done with the shaming from other people, and particularly myself. I mean, here's the truth of it. First of all, it works for Oprah and she's saying it out loud, which is awesome because I don't know how many people any of us know who are taking these yes. but are doing it in secret totally. and saying, I'm just drinking water, I'm just walking, I'm just doing whatever. And so what? Just say whatever it is. Because I think if if I look at someone and say, gosh, all they did was drink water and walk yeah, well, two miles, I'm doing, I'm doing it and nothing's working for me, you realize that maybe that's not the whole trick. Here's the other thing. Yeah. Oprah, for her entire career, yeah. made a career on telling the truth. Yeah. And don't you love that she's... But also, I can't even understand mm -hmm. how much um, it must feel to be her yeah. and to have had a lifetime of people talking about what she looks like. Yeah. Your weight, your this, your that, your gain weight, you lose weight, all that stuff. But I do think for Oprah, I mean, when you, when you think about it, when you are lighter, your joints feel better. Yeah. You can do more things. When you're lighter, you, usually what happens are your, all your numbers, your cholesterol numbers, your blood pressure numbers, all those things that have been working super hard in your body get, you know, usually end up, you know, changing. So in addition to this, this isn't a, a cosmetic Vanity. or a vein thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, wow, I get Feel to good. do more. She's about to be 70. Oprah Winfrey, who looks spectacular, yes. is about to be 70 years old. And she's going into this next decade saying, you know what? And, and she, she talked about how she's genetically predisposed to obesity. Yeah. So you're fighting that in addition. So there's a lot. I mean, I really on. do hope, and, and obviously we don't know everything yeah. about these drugs. You mm -hmm. know, but I and we are not doctors, but I do hope right. that for people that need them, yes, they will become more affordable because yes. you can see how it can tra transform a life. Right, and I mean, and Dr. Raj was on earlier, and she was talking about she's waiting for them to come in a pill form. Yeah, you know, waiting till they are out more mainstream and that they can be used for a lot of people, so you don't have the other yeah. ailments that come. But isn't with Oprah cool? By t you know, when yes. everybody else seems to be hiding it, she's telling the truth. And she originally said, you know what, I don't like those meds. I, I don't. I think that's I don't know what she said—a cop out or something. Yeah. And then she, you know what she did? She changed her mind. What? Huh? Changing your mind about something. You're allowed. You're yes. allowed to like something and not like it. Maybe you've gone to the same restaurant for ten years and you keep going with your husband, and suddenly you don't like it anymore. Are you and talking like, chirpy chicken? Sure, I love chirping. <laughs> okay, good. Chirping. chirping. <laughs> but but you can say to your husband, I've I always don't liked go, that, yeah. but I don't like it anymore. Yes. I want something different yes. now. You're allowed. And you, you have can permission. say it to yourself. Say it. You can say it to yourself. Yes. Too. I've but changed. used to bring me joy doesn't It doesn't anymore. anymore. I used to, I thought I wanted to be a nurse. Look how I Oprah don't want teaches to us anymore. even when it comes to this. You're allowed, yeah. Um, okay, there's another hot magazine cover oh. that we've been talking about. It's Sienna Miller, and she is on the cover yeah. of Vogue. Mm -hmm. First of all, she looks incredible. Yeah. She's pregnant. Yeah, she looks beautiful. And she is having a baby with her boyfriend, Ollie Green, uh -huh. who she's been with since 2021. Yeah. So in the interview, she opens up about being 41 and pregnant, mm -hmm. saying this. Yeah. I'd love to get to a point where I didn't feel like I needed to make a joke of me being an older and having a baby to show that I'm in on the joke. Yeah, I think a lot of, a lot of people do that. Like, you, you want to beat them to the punch. So you make the joke about, oh, I'm an older mom, or you make a 
if you're if you feel heavy and uncomfortable, you make the joke about yeah. it. Oh, I was always yes. the fat kid. That's the joke you make so no one else can make it. And it's so and funny how up. that becomes kind of your narrative, right? Like yeah. you want to be self-deprecating yes. so that you feel like, oh, don't say behind my back this. Yeah. It's interesting because you you had kids later. Yeah. And yet you do not do this. I don't this. care. No, people, I'm sure there are people, and I, I've, I've heard through, you know, different avenues that sometimes people are like, wow, you did that this late? Wow. But I am so um, happy and fulfilled with my decision that I don't feel any ounce of shame or Yeah, you don't or, leave room mm -mm. for that. Because my dad died when I was in college. You get your parent for as long as you get your parent. And they lay a foundation that you cannot shake. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Why can't I move on from that? Um, it's very you true. And yeah. it's, but you know what else? What? It shows me, and this Hoda teaches me this, is that when people come on mm -hmm. our show and they say, so you, how are your kids? How are your kids? Hoda never leaves. Hoda doesn't feel like she needs a joke mm -mm. because she's so delighted yeah. by them. Yeah, I am. That when yeah. you lead with delight, yeah. guess what follows? Delight. Delight. When you lead with enthusiasm, and this has to do with everything. Yes. People are enthusiastic yes. back. If you lead with love, yes. guess what comes back? Yes. It's love. You don't feel like you need to make a joke no. and you're the best. And right. not that, you know, and I get CNS thing, this isn't, you know, but right. I love that right. you're totally secure in it. Yes. Yes. That feels good. Yes. It was the it was the best decisions I've ever made. Okay. So let's <laughs> talk about this. Christmas Eve is ten days away, and there's a hot toy that you can't find right yeah, now. Yeah, and guess who's writing about it? The Wall Street Journal, so yeah. it must be true. And this toy is $13.99. And you can get it at CVS and drugstores and stuff. It's, there he is, y'all. It's the Snoopy. It's Snoopy. Now, it's gone viral. Oh, bring Snoopy out. <gasps> you got one, Mike? How? Oh. Wow. Look at him. Just feel him. Oh he's my God, soft. he's got a puffer on, a jacket. He's chic. Oh no, I understand. I, I do understand. Too. So you can't get this. We had to order this one from Rhode Island. Apparently, we had were, to drive Snoopy from Rhode Island. He there got were hair none and makeup. Available. Um, and this is hot. Try, just try, I, I double dog dare you to go to CVS and see if you can find one. Now I'm going to have to go. Me you too. You know, when she double dog too. dares. Me too. It's so cute. And you know, the best part hat. is he's most famous with Gen Zers. Isn't that interesting? Are Gen they just Zers. watching the old Snoopy cartoons and no, stuff? No, I think TikTok has TikTok, done, yeah. made this little guy a star. Okay. Um, Very cute. Coming up, y'all, we are so excited for this. <gasps> the talented stars yes. of the color purple. The newly Golden Globe nominated Fantasia Barino Taylor and Daniel Brooks coming up after this. waiting anxiously mm. for months for the color purple months. to finally be released, especially when we found out that these two powerhouses would be starring. In we it. are talking about the newly Golden Globe nominated actresses. <laughs> Here they are, Fantasia Barino Taylor, who plays <laughs> Celie, and Danielle Brooks, who plays Sophia. Let's take a look. That man might have no Honey, look who's wearing the pants. Bravo, bravo. By the way, watching this, oh. 
watching oh this, but gosh. also uh. watching you all watch it, that was a religious experience for Hoda living. and me. What was happening there? Oh, it's excitement for this mm. moment that we're having, you know? Uh, I think for me, that's one of my favorite parts because Celie goes through so much. Yeah. And that's her moment to move, to dance, to stand up on a thing and tap dance, which oh. was hard. And you learned how to tap dance. I learned how to tap dance. You know what? That, that's my favorite. I mean. Go, girl. That yeah. Is amazing. I, I, I would go home and, and practice at night, and my mama would say, You should go to bed. Why are you up? And I was like, Ma, this is for Seely. This is for Seely. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what oh. is so striking, Fantasia? First of all, congratulations to both of you Thank on the movie, you. your Golden Globe nominations, all of it. This was a part you almost turned down, Fantasia. You were that close to saying no thank you. Yeah. What was happening and what made you decide to say yes to this role? Well, I played this role on Broadway years yeah. ago. I was so young mm -hmm. and my life was all over the place. I mean, you were talking, you know, my stuff was out there because I've always shared it. Yes. And I felt like I was carrying my cross and Celie's cross and that was an overload for me. Also, in the movie, Blitz, our amazing director, mm -hmm. he gives Celie an imagination. Oh. She didn't have that on Broadway. Yeah. Oh. So you don't get to see how she processes through. It's just being told ugly. She's getting beat on. She's taking care of all these kids. And then here's I'm here, and the audience is excited because yeah. you want to see her win. But how did she how get did she there? Get there? Yeah. And that's what I was very proud that he was what? showing that because I did that for what myself. What made you say yes? The imagination, oh, the okay. the young girls. Yeah. I have a daughter who's 22 now, mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted that legacy for them to see that it doesn't matter mm. what you've been through. Mm. You can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what proof. else? <laughs> the, the other thing that we talked about over there that I just love is mm -hmm. when you played this role on Broadway, mm -hmm. you were carrying a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. You had felt deceived by people you mm. trusted, yeah. mm -hmm. you loved, and yet yeah. you didn't let that fear that you would go back to that mm -hmm. place personally mm -hmm. take you away from this mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know what, guys, I had just started, before Scott Sanders called me, I had just started traumatic therapy. Mm -hmm. Traumatic therapy is when they go back into your childhood and try to get you to remember things that you've either suppressed or forgotten mm -hmm. that's hindering you from your adulthood. Mm -hmm. yeah. I stopped traumatic therapy with Dr. Anita Phillips, and she's the best, shout out to her. And I let Celie be my therapist. Wow. wow. So I found so much healing this time, and, and I'm it's... glad that I didn't run. Danielle, you are such a star of Thank this you. movie. Uh, not only a Golden Globe, but a Critics' Choice yeah. Award nominee. We're very, it's very, amazing. very proud of you. <laughs> so what did you, I mean, this, is, this, this show has been through so many different iterations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, tell us what you bring to this. Oh my gosh, I've had such a journey with this. It all started when I was 15. I got to see The Color Purple for the first time mm. on Broadway, my first show. 10 years later, get to do the revival, get all of this, you know, experience, and here we are in this moment, you know, getting to do m this movie, my first studio film. It's been a journey that I could never have dreamed for myself, mm. you know, and getting to have the relationship with Miss Oprah Winfrey and yes. Fantasia and Taraji and getting to work it. with Corey, my classmate, and Coleman. It's been just a, a joy of my That's career. Sisterhood. I mean, I feel like yes. watching you all. Yes over the last couple months has mm -hmm. been set. I mean, we've talked about this movie because of how beautiful you are together. Yes. That sisterhood is something yeah. that we look up to. Mm -hmm. oh. um, and you play the role that Oprah mm -hmm. wants. I know. Was that? She originated. <laughs> was that so? Daunting. Big shoes to fill. <laughs> I can't tell feel. you that much. But she <laughs> held my hand the entire time. And I tell you, I tell you, and I mean this with all of my heart, I feel like she gave me permission to be the cobbler of my own uh. shoe. Wow and create this character and do what I needed to do for this generation yeah. while still honoring what she did was very important to me. So thank you, Miss Oprah Winfrey, for passing that baton. We're, not, we're gonna take a quick break. Will y'all stay for a little bit? Yeah, yes. okay, one don't more go segment. anywhere. We've got much more with mm -hmm. Fantasia and Danielle right after this. Oh, I gotta tell you, this is such a Coming up tomorrow. Grammy winning artist Alanis Morissette stops by. And from the White Lotus and the Sopranos, Emmy winner Michael Imperioli. Plus, Bravo personality Darren Karp has what's poppin' in pop culture. That's all Friday on Hoda and Jenna.
are back with the Golden Globe nominated stars of the color purple, Fantasia, Barino Taylor, and Danielle Brooks. Um, okay, Danielle, we, we showed a picture yeah. or a video yeah. of you showing this to, to my daughter baby. Freya. To your Freya. Oh, look at her. <laughs> Tell us what that was like. Oh my that's gosh, you. it makes me cry every time yeah. because just her getting to say, that's you, that's, that's you, you, that's you on this big screen in her first movie. You know, wearing a crown is just oh. like, I'll never forget it. Can you I'll imagine what, what you're teaching her just oh by my doing, gosh. by being you? Uh, that's what's so exciting. Yeah. Like, you get to be that example for your yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it makes you really evaluate everything that you do in life so that you can pass that on, you know? But now she has this beautiful movie, the beautiful music that's in the movie mm -hmm. to always hold on we, to. We heard she tried to be an extra. Oh my <laughs> God. She, this is yo, a she's trying all to hoard moms her understand this. I tried so hard to get in this movie. Yeah. And it did not <laughs> work. What she happened? was supposed to come to me and she looked at me like, don't touch me. <laughs> she, she had costume, hair, and Oh, she was ready. Ready, she but it was nap time. It was, it was not, and in the beginning, she was so like, she, yes. she loved her. And then but I was no, you, By the way, you've been very busy, miss. Not yes. only are you doing this film, you're back in college. Yes. You have gotten your certificate to be a sommelier. Yeah. Which is amazing. That's pretty cool. That was hard. Yeah, yeah. it is hard. It is hard. Three tries. Yeah. Oh my God. But I wasn't going to give up. Why do you, well, tell us about these goals. What are, what are you thinking about or hoping for? You know, my husband took me to the winery for the first time. I love a good cab. Do you like a Pinot Grigio? <laughs> <laughs> but when he took me, I felt like the process and how it's made kind of reminded me of myself. Mm. So I fell in love with what, how, how so? Uh, the pressing and what it has to go through in order to get into Come that. Come on, model. somebody. Yes! Come on, sister! <laughs> That's deep. I'm serious. I was like, so wow, good. I feel like a nice bottle of wine. I had to go through everything I went Come through. Come on, now somebody. I'm, I'm bottled up very nice. Sweet. Don't she look like <laughs> she look, you look you like a nice cab? Yeah, right? that, I was going to say, that care. dress is screaming cab. <laughs> An expensive bucket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not cheap. <laughs> you, you know, you have, um, Fantasia, you have so many people that have helped you out along mm -hmm. the way. Patti LaBelle. Yes. Tyler, Tyler Perry. Perry. Tyler Perry. What, what have they meant to you? Uh, mm. Patti LaBelle, for me, in the industry, you don't really meet a lot of people who are nice or who will sit with you and and invest in you and mm. Patty invests in me. She cooks with me. She keeps it real and I love that. You know, we went through some similar things. I know she's coming out with her movie and yeah. mm. if you're looking for somebody to play it, call me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tyler Perry, when I lost everything, he was the first one to send me a nice big check. I didn't understand wow. it. I didn't know why. Now, after watching his documentary, I get it. Yeah. Tyler Perry mm. has been through everything. And as a little boy, he was abused. And I remember yes. he said he escaped to his imagination, like living underneath his porch. He was living out of his car. He knows what life feels like, and he's been spending his time giving back. In addition to the money, he gives you more than uh, that. More obviously. than that. If I text him, I'm like, hey, what are you doing? He'll immediately call. I'm in the mountains. I'm riding. I'm like, I don't want to bother you, but he's there for me, and I'm, I have a lot of questions. Mm. Being that I'm in school now, going yeah. for business, yes. I was so young when I won. Yes. I didn't know nothing about the you business, but this yeah. time, yeah. I'm going to You're doing it. it right, mm. okay? You're doing it right. Don't you love that? Okay, mm. both of y'all grew up in the Carolinas. Yes. yes. Singing in church. Singing in church. Yes. Is, is there a song that y'all like? <laughs> uh, they're trying. They're, they're trying. trying. You know what? We're is there trying. a song y'all like? No, how about one y'all like? <laughs> what there is. Your favorite, your favorite yeah. that you uh, you singing? singing with me? Yeah. Yeah. I'll try to follow Wait, in there. Look, I gotta find my key. <coughs> we Soon tie. as I stopped worrying, worrying how the story ends, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. But I stopped looking at back then. I let go and I let God, let God have his way. Oh wait, y'all can't, y'all can't do this to us. Love you, girl. Remember when you said, don't make you cry? Yes. <laughs> 
It's you okay. Know. It's we, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Yo, Yo, we, we love you. Whoever <laughs> votes in the Golden Globe. <laughs> yeah. Who are the voters yeah. on the Golden Globe? Well, we people don't are going to be voting for these two. Vote. <laughs> <on these. laughs> Women, oh my we God! Y'all. Thank, Thank you. Thank Come you. back Thank over you and over again. Thank you, Danielle. Okay. We'll, we'll be back. We'll be back right, right after that. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> There's nothing cuter than a coordinated family fashion for a holiday party, so we are going to show you exactly how it's done. Yeah, to hear you help you family. <laughs> Y'all love some, Sorry. some of the hottest trends. I'll help you. <laughs> Please help People me. People style director and our friend, Andrea Sorry, Laventhal. Sorry, Andrea, we were stuck in a moment, but yes. I'm getting out of it. Yes. Because okay, I was tis, in that moment. Okay, yes. tis the season. Yes. It's time that we figure out what we should wear. I like these coordinating outfits. What is the first trend? It's it's velvet, the right? The first trend I'm calling velvet jewel box. Come on out. We've got tone. Raja, yes. Kanika, and their daughters. How Shahira, gorgeous do they look? Gorgeous. <gasps> what a gorgeous family. So, Talk to us about this. Okay, so the key to a successful family look is to not do necessarily matchy-matchy, but to keep it coordinated. So here they are all doing jewel tones. Um, you see, you know, a little sapphire, some garnet, some amethyst, and some sparkle, too, because velvet looks great with a touch of sparkle. Oh, I love that. Okay, how, do you like these outfits? Love it. Love how will Yes. Y'all are so cute. You should be I in a magazine. You're a beautiful, beautiful We totally family. agree. We just <laughs> decided you're a Gap ad. Okay. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. So they look great. Guys. Okay, love that. coming up next, oh. we're a little starstruck because oh. this is our senior producer. Yeah. You know him as Furface, but his name is Gavin. Along Gavin. with his wow. wife Mary and their daughter Quinn and son Asa. Hi, so guys. This look we're calling oh, Silver Quinn. Bells because we love this monochromatic. Oh, how cute. You look adorable. Right. And the key to doing monochromatic is to mix the different like textures and fabrics. So we have on mom the satin skirt. Love Mary, it. you look Mary. I so love great. the top. Mary, we know I'm you're so the boss at well. home, too. And please, look at these accessories. <laughs> Everyone's sparkling. He's Shoes, so purses. And they look great. Okay, but again, we have to, to hear about Quinn's look. Quinn, Quinn I, we love your shoes. You Quinn. look gorgeous. I mean, and she accessorized herself. She chose what she. You, you know, did. It looks great. Quinn, nice. And, and we have an extra purse. Now, which some I love. some people would say that Gavin or or a lot of men can't pull off silver, but you say this make is, it gray. Make it gray. Gray is you know a cousin <laughs> of silver. Silver without the sparkle. He looks so nice and coordinated with the rest of the family without throwing some tinsel on him. By the way, Ace is cute as a button. Ace. He's got his purse. I, I love Asa. it. It's a purse. How <laughs> cute are they? Asa. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank okay, you. let's bring out Joe and then and Joe. Joe and Joe along with their daughters, Margo and Georgia. <laughs> oh, what a I beautiful are they family. The, you know, another gap at it. I know. <laughs> Tell us about this look. Okay, so I'm calling this fair aisle, but make it fashion. Because when you think of a fair aisle sweater, you think of neutrals and browns and country right. with maybe some sweatpants. No. Oh, We're giving so it a cute. fashion upgrade with a sequin skirt and a tool skirt and the dads in their chic black bottoms. Because this is a party look. Yeah. You could take fair aisle to a party. It's doesn't just have to be, you know, in the country. I'm yeah, you guys look, look incredible. How great they look. Do you guys right? like your outfits? 
Love them. You do? Yeah. 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 You don't, no, you don't like your you. outfit? Oh, you you were bribed to That's say okay. yes. <laughs> we like, talked about like an honest kid, and your shoes are so cute. Don't they look great? <laughs> y'all, thank, thank you. you. Beautiful. You so I love it. Ready. I love it. Okay, ah. last but not least, y'all, we have Grandma Michelle, yes. Mom Brittany, and Brittany's kiddos, Gracie and Jack, and they're rocking the plaid. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Could you die, right? Uh, I can't handle what's happening so, right now. I would say the key to modern plaid is to probably use the bathroom before you go to the party. Yes. It's this young, that's number one. Hi. But we wanted to give plaid, you know, a little bit of a modern look, so we paired it with oh, edgier yeah. fabrics. For Brit, we did these uh, faux leather pants, okay. a little faux leather leggings on Gracie. Jack has a cool little sweater. Coco, which is what we call grandma, has a velvet Coco. blazer. Coco. Is hot. And this is actually a suit that mom oh, and daughter switched. are wearing. Oh, that's a great idea. split it up. Because you can wear the same size. Yeah, not everybody <laughs> can do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's our holiday hack, right? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Can you wave? And if you can't, that's fine. We're still going to keep you. By the way, this is the cutest. This is another beautiful family yes. picture right but here. But again, we're needing that match. Go, girl. Go, 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 Maybe we should let everybody yeah. come and dance. Come on, everybody. Come on out, guys. Have a family everybody. moment. Yeah. Show off your love. Thank you. Y'all oh. look incredible. We got them all here dressed. By the way, you guys look so adorable. These are great, Aren't Andrea. These great? Really well, good. Uh, amazing. Thank you, Andrea. Oh, my and pleasure. And thank all of y'all. Happy holidays. And to check out the new issue of People Magazine, <laughs> all you have to do is go to newsstands. It's on tomorrow. <laughs> Want to come up? All right, coming up tomorrow, Food Network star Jeff Morrow cooks up the perfect main course for your Christmas table. Coming up after this. Where to go? Yeah. If you are hosting for the holidays, we have got a real crowd pleaser for your dinner table. Our pal Jeff Morrow is here to show us how to make the perfect beef tenderloin. Ooh. Jeff's the host of Holiday Wars. It's on the Food Network. The finale finale airs this Sunday. So this is the perfect tenderloin. Why perfect? Because yes. it's so easy to make and it feeds a crowd and it's delicious. Those are the three main Simple. points we're looking for. Simple. Okay. So you're so not, you know, just like sitting there on the stove all day. All day. No. You can do this ahead of time. Okay. I'll show you what. We're going to make our black powder rubbed reverse seared tenderloin with a creamy cheddar horseradish Okay, sauce. we're in. This it's is like 90 words in there, but it's all flavor. So you're making a rub yourself. Yeah, so this is my black powder rub. Very famous. We've got peppercorns. These are the secrets, right? Black sesame seeds, black poppy seeds, mustard seeds. We toast them up, activate them. Then we grind them. How long them. you gotta, toast these babies for? Well, because well, because you just bring out the essential oil. I know, but I mean, oil. how long? Uh, a couple minutes till you couple start minutes. smelling them. Okay. Then we're going to zip them here in a food mini prep with some salt, kosher salt, and a little turbinado or, or brown sugar. That gives, the, and then it turns into this black rub. powder rub, which Amazing. coats 365 all over that center cut tenderloin, right? This is basically a giant filet mignon. So okay. who doesn't like that? Well, and it's a special occasion 
explosion. So go for the so go for it, right? you dump it all like that. And all then over we it? roll it around okay. so you get that 360 degree coverage. Uh -huh. Okay. And all this is going to do is just kind of seep into this. You could do this the night before. Okay. Leave it kind of unwrapped in the fridge do you on a do wire it the rack. Night before because it because it marinates. It marinates. It makes something special happen with the proteins and the strands and that meat. It kind of makes it even more tender and more tasty. Then we're going to put in the oven at 225. Slow. Slow. Oh, slow. slow reverse here so it's perfectly medium rare or medium or even rare if you want. Top to center in the oven so you can kind of set it How for, long it you for do it? two hours. Okay. And you instant read it. Do you, right. do you put it on broil to make it brown? Or no. You? What we're going to do is we're going to oh. give it a little brown. Ah, oh, come on. You know I'm going to sear Wait, some meat. Jeff, can I ask you? Sometimes people do that searing first and then do the oven. These people are not our friends. Okay. Yeah. They're wasting mine and yours this time. Okay. Well, they come on this show and like sear first. They have. Yeah. I give them my cell smell phone this, number, which this. you both have, and you say call up Jeff. Oh my okay. God. Okay. Smell because that. this is easier, but people do now get to see the magic right before you plate yeah. it. Yeah. All right. right. Garlic, butter, some and fresh thyme, and now you see them do it on like you know all those shows and stuff. Yeah. And all those so, fancy oh, guys, that. and you oh, butter baste what? it with all butter that garlic, and, and this garlic. is getting that crust on there, locking in. Lock it in. All that black powder. A rub, we're gonna get a beautiful oh my crust God. on there. What is this cheese so bowl? This is a, a nice combination of very, very sharp cheddar, almost too yeah. sharp. Yeah. Be no, careful. No, it's not is too sharp. Is your nose not okay? My she nose feels happy. And then some creamy fontina. Here is some. This is my secret cheese. to a great stable evapor evaporated milk, stable cheese sauce. Go, you could put that in there with a ton of prepared horseradish. I love that. You can't that beat much. it. And then to help bump up those those kind of nose spicy flavors, some Dijon. Oh my gosh, this sauce. A little bit of hot sauce. Wow. Okay. And then we don't, we just kind of let it melt. We never simmer this. That's the key. What's this? That is a little bit of cornstarch if you need it to mix to it make with it the thick. To make it, it thick. But usually, you, don't need you to. wait your time, you put enough cheese. I mean, look how much cheese we put in there. Yeah. You're going to maximize your flavor that way. Okay. So we got slicing some ready. this is important. This how is, do you cut it? First of all, you do you look at it like that. Okay. Yeah. Hi. And then you get a sharp knife. Yeah. Okay. Then you just touch it once. You're like, that's <laughs> perfect, right? We cooked it to about 125. 125. All right. And now, we're gonna just on do, the grain. I don't like really thin slices. I want them to be want people to feel meaty. like meaty. So if we cut it, you're gonna see that perfect. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's what I love about a tenderloin, right? The outside kind of cuts are, are a little bit a little more well done which for the people. Which is what people, I like. Which was you like I did. I read your bio yeah, last night thank for you. three hours straight. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I was it, like, Jenna does not like pink meat. That's right. Hoda, who might like you a little more pink or meat. Pinker. Yeah. I, like, I read your I like bio. Pretty well done. You three do? hours. Yeah. It's a really weird night for me. <laughs> and I, was just I bet reading you had your wonderful bio. dreams. Oh of course. Now what we do when you bring it to the table, you coat it or serve it on the side with that that gooey, gooey cheese mm. sauce, right? Yeah. And you just kind of drape it over, a little fresh herbs on there. So easy to do. And you just kind of. What fresh herbs do you like? I like a little blend of parsley and thyme. Mm. Not so much mm. rosemary. It's a hearty, you know, mm. uh, herb that needs a little cooking, but. Mm. The horseradish and this cheese mm. sauce. Do you feel it inside mm. you? The mm -hmm. best way, and the it's best like way. right here. It's nose heat. Just nose heat is cute. It's very hard to replicate when you're not a professional like myself. So mm -hmm. tread lightly, but these are very replicatable. Je Jeff, Jeff, thank, thank Jeff. you, thank you. Happy holidays. Replicatable. Replicatable. It is. Yes. It is today. Y'all, to get this recipe, go today.com so slash food and catch the finale of Holiday Wars you're kicking this it. Sunday on the Food Network. Coming up next, to add a little drama to your holiday makeup. We're going to show you some looks inspired by our mm. favorite celebs after this. Oh, my God. Yummy. I love a beef tenderloin. Mm.
With the days winding down to Christmas, those holiday parties are in full swing, which means you need to get a little more glammed up than Here, usual. Here with this year's hottest holiday makeup looks is the founder of Ashunta Sheriff, uh, Sharif Beauty, Ashunta Sharif Kendricks, whose celeb clients include, by the way, nobody, just Taraji P. <laughs> and Ava DuVernay, among many others. She's been working movies. You're Doing a very it busy all person. has a new, li and a new line launching. Yes, line launching. So yeah. much happening. Um, but let's get into these holidays. We're let's proud of you, okay, by the way. Thank you. I'm okay. proud of you guys. Uh, sure. True women supporters. <laughs> Start with the lips. Okay, yeah. so. This is Denise. So Here this is yeah. Denise. And we have a look from Carrie Underwood from Red Carpet, which I think is gorgeous. Ooh, she does a nude lip. Right, so she did a nude lip. Why a nude lip? It's an alternative to, you know, the red lip, the traditional red lips we see. So right now we're going to line her lips. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just going to overline a little bit. That's super important. I'm taking to this. To overline? To over, when you're doing a nude yeah. lip, you want to overline because you really want to accentuate that pout. Okay. And then I'm taking this beautiful vegan lip gloss from Mimic Beauty. Pretty. Um, this was made by Mimi Camara, a celebrity makeup artist who was just tired of mixing and matching glosses. Go like this. And you get the perfect shades of nudes. That's so beautiful. And does it matter your skin tone for a nude? They're made for all skin tones yeah. and complexion. So yeah. super, super easy. And then we also, you want to hydrate those lips with Lanolips Tinted Lip Balm. Oh. So if you're not someone who wants a lot of color, it's perfect. You can just put it on and go. Okay, right? our so next trend. Our next trend on Jasmine is exciting because I love, love, love lashes. Yes. So we did two different types of lashes. Let's talk about Selena Gomez because this is what you're looking at yeah, when so you're thinking when about you, the right yeah, type. So this is Selena Gomez off of a carpet. Um, she has on a lash. There's so many different options for lashes now. So yeah. we did two different styles on Jasmine. Okay. So on one side, which is on this side, she basically has nothing, which we're going to get into next. By the way, your nothing is very good. <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. Okay. We we're like gonna, your nothing. Gonna, but on the, on the left side, yeah. she is wearing the Pro Lux Lash, which is a tell. vegan lash, waterproof, um, created by a lash extension uh, expert. Her name is uh, Haley, oh. and she just really wanted to bring that at-home lash extension okay. kit to you so you can experience. You can wear these 10 days, so you can put what? them on New Year's Eve and then have them all the way through the holiday. And then I have another option, which is called Lux Lash, um, before we go into this. Also founded by a woman there on the table. They yeah. can be worn two to four weeks. Um, it has a special adhesive. Wow. Super, super amazing. And 3% of the charity, um, of their proceeds go to charity Wait, for you and women. you can wear Lemons these? For, two, two, for two to four weeks. So but let's the get glue in. must be crazy. It's amazing. Yeah. But it comes off with oil makeup remover. Oh, it does. Okay. Now, lastly, my lashes. Okay. Yeah. Ashunta Sharif Beauty, vegan lashes. They're made of plant biodegradable fibers. Mm -hmm. They're magnetic lashes. She's already lined. So our yeah. motto is, if you can line, you can lash. So close your eyes for me, Jasmine. We're going to apply these right on air. Boom, boom, boom. And just like that. So on. wait, magnetic means you put, what so is the, magnetic so, lashes? So mean? magnetic lashes means it has a, a liner adhesive that so, has magnetic so particles. So the liner so is the liner magnet. is mag, yes. And so as you can see, uh -huh. we just put them on, boom, just oh like that. So, and you can wear those 20 times, 20 times, literally. Wow. I okay? feel like I, I couldn't do that to myself, but you're saying yes, you could. If you can line, you can lash. Okay. That's I smart. like okay. this. All right. Okay. Let's talk about eyes that pop. What celebrity are we looking so at So we're looking here? at Megan. This, oh, look at how good she looks. Megan the Stallion looks stunning here. This is what I call a dissipated smoky eye yeah. so it's not like that concentrated yeah. smoke yeah, yeah. and as you can see on Camille it's really like no. just soft so she can go just like this but I have like oily eyelids and sometimes we want to add a little bit of punch to yeah. it so this Violite France um, U paint close your eyes is a great way to just I love a purple. add just a little so bit of dimension and uh, just literally look we can change everything how pretty just that is that iridescent okay super easy oh to apply oh my gosh it looks totally different oh no then we can go even further with the number one selling palette in the world by Danessa Myrick's Beauty. This How is the I Am palette. Gorgeous I is am. that? How gorgeous. Such a great holiday gift. So she loves green. We're going to add a little bit of abundance. Everything in this abundance. palette. Yes, it has like love peels, the names. Um, abundance, Ooh. worthy. Uh, and enough. Just, yep, <laughs> enough. Unbreakable. And so we're going to just basically add some more color because you don't have to just have black that. smoky eyes. You Look can literally that. have gorgeous. a pop. What is happening? What is happening? With you? Beautiful. Okay. And then we have some <laughs> inexpensive uh, palette versions as well. Um, from Kim, um, Kim Baker, who did Glamazon Beauty, which is amazing. And then, of course, Charlotte Tilbury. Tilbury. Yeah, okay. we like her Beauty Verse palette is what we actually use to do the actual base of this you eye. You know We're what's so amazing good. about you? You know <laughs> so what good. we love about you? Is that you shout out every, every single yeah. woman. Yeah. I'm here. a woman supporter. We can tell. I'm a woman supporter. We it's a real it. deal. It's we a real deal it. for me. Right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Absolutely. And Thanks we'll look for your me. makeup launch. Yes. We'll be back right after this. You shout. You shout.
You know what we love about Rockefeller Center? Look outside. Look what's happening. There's a bride and groom. See yes. them? Wait, do you see them? Can you see them? Not, here, why don't you come, come here. Come with oh, me. Oh, no, they, they're... Come with me. Come with me. <laughs> Wait, not them. 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 Keep going. Right there. Oh, yeah. You How see cute them? is that? Anyway, stuff happens. Oh, Happy holidays. Anyway, Happy wedding. Thank you. Um, Okay, you guess what? I have a podcast. I do. Tara Westover. Listen to it. Get that QR code. It's a good plan. Bye. Bye. We'll be on tomorrow. Every morning, get into the holiday spirit with today. We're going to spread some holiday cheer. Some added inspiration to give back this holiday season. We are launching today's toy drive. Holiday gifts for everybody on the list. That is delicious. Our biggest holiday crowd yet. Make today your home for the holidays. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back, here we go. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. Happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. I went online this morning and I rented us a beautiful house out by the beach. I figured if I made the reservation and packed our bags, it would eliminate most of the reasons to say no. In Leave the World Behind, Julia Roberts is a far cry from the America's sweetheart role. This is your house? When your characters meet, first of all, I could not stand your character. I never thought there would be a Julia Roberts movie where I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I want to just strangle her. Well, my work is done here. <laughs> Leave the World Behind is not your typical end-of-the-world apocalypse film. It centers around two families forced together, starring Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke, Mahershala Ali, and Mahala Harold. Were you concerned about playing someone who would be so unlikable? Was that on your radar? No, I wasn't concerned, but definitely, you know, I want to find the, the balance and the yeah. fairness to her. Right. I didn't want her to be just unlikable mm -hmm. and just yeah. annoying. And so, I mean, unfortunately, there's a lot of people to draw from to play a character like this yes. in the world. Yes. So it was uh, interesting always to be in, especially in, in, in our scenes where she's showing who she is, but she's also so guarded yeah. and so just suspicious. Yes, and, defensive, and, yes. And uh, arm lengths away yeah. from everyone in conversation. What was the experience like, Julia, working with this man? You know, there's just a poetry to the way that he carries himself in life and in art, in my experience. A poetry, that's a, that's a beautiful way to describe you. Very kind of you. How, how would you describe working with Julia? A joy. A joy, Just yeah. a joy, yeah. a joy. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's not a joy working mm. with people, and you know that. Right? <laughs> and so um, that makes all the difference in the world, enjoying who you're working with because so much of our work has to do with like playing in vulnerable places. Mm -hmm. The Obamas are the exec producers on this. How much did that play in the fact that you two are sitting here together? I think it plays into how puffed up I feel sitting here right now. <laughs> I think I'd still be sitting here, but uh -huh. that they wanted to collaborate yeah. was a thrill. Yeah. And, and it has elevated the project. Yeah. I, I first and foremost, I'm always looking at what is the material? Yeah. What is the opportunity with the character? Mm -hmm. What is the opportunity for growth? And who am I working with? Mahershala is a two-time Academy Award winner who plays the suave finance advisor, G.H. Scott. So you think that the hackers or whatever knocked out our satellites? I no longer think that this is just a couple of teenagers in the Philippines. Well, Variety basically said that uh, the quote, I think, was Ali steals the show. How does that how does that land? How does that land with you? <laughs> no, it's so weird. I just hope the film resonates with people. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity to do this work and grow and be pushed, you know. So 
I'm, I'm in good Whatever. company. Whatever. He steals I, the I'm show. In good and you know I'm who else steals company. the show yeah. is Ethan. I think they say it a little differently, but no, I, I know what you mean. So if you were giving the elevator pitch on this movie, um, how would you describe it? It's a thriller that's about the way we hold ourselves in the world and seeing people put in the most extreme circumstances mm -hmm. of crisis and how they respond to that. Mm -hmm. How about you, Marshall? I'm just in awe of that answer. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's early. <laughs> it's it's um, a study in, in trust, um, a study in the fragility of uh, the human condition and our dependence on technology. Yeah, and, that's a big one. And it's really about us, to me, walking away and beginning to have a conversation about how we can appreciate these technologies, but also not be so dependent upon them where if something happens, we're not going to be able to continue to to exist in a similar way. I mean, there's a there's a scene, obviously, the first scene when your two characters meet for the first time, you're in a tuxedo, yeah. you're clearly been out for a beautiful night out, and there's a lot of skepticism from... Well, clearly, <laughs> he's trying to make it seem as though perhaps he's just totally to say... normal, right? Yes. So in that, you know, before you became wildly famous, mm. were mm. there moments in your life where you were prejudged? I'm 6'2", I've been 6'2", since I was 14 years yeah. old dark-skinned black man, proud to be. But that comes with certain things in walking and navigating this world. And people's reaction to you is ahead of your consciousness and understanding yeah. about why they're reacting to you a certain way. It's the things that are more subtle mm. that are, that wear on you a bit. And it's the, you know, a turning over of, of the ring on the subway or mm -hmm. an extra set of questions. And mm -hmm. so, what I love about G.H. is he comes into this situation totally aware of what to, to expect. And as certain things are happening, he's just trying to find a way to navigate around it to get where he wants to mm. be. And that's just been my way in that's life. That's been way. Sure, I could spend a lot of time getting caught up on certain exchanges, and at times I do. But if anything, I'm still just trying to navigate that situation so that I can get to where I want to be. And so it, so it becomes like a muscle um, mm -hmm. that you sort of def you, you you walk the earth sort of defensively mm. and sort of ready for things and you try to move them out your way with the least amount of explosiveness mm. <laughs> you know and i think yeah. that's gh there's a lot i felt like i sort of inherently understood about him mm -hmm. he was actually written older in the book a bit mm -hmm. so there's elements of him that clearly remind me of an uncle or a grandfather mm -hmm. or whatnot that that are still very relevant today mm -hmm. and how you, how I have to, or how many of us just navigate mm -hmm. the world in general. Yeah, uh, that's beautiful, by the way. Everything. A little long-winded, I'm sorry, no, but I, it was I, actually I, I tried to get to it. Was, it was perfect. <laughs> poetry, that's what I'm telling you. That's, you're right. Screen Julia and husband Danny Motor have three teenagers. Mahershala Ali and wife Amatu Sami Karim have a six-year-old daughter. We discussed parenting in the age of smartphones. 
Watching the technology obsession scared me watching this yeah. because I think about this with my kids yes. now. You How know. did you navigate with your kids or what did you do? <clears throat> so for us, we just had sort of simple rules where we had a charging station where everybody's phone goes when you get home and there's no phones at the table, right. certainly. And I think that my kids have seen my complete um, despair when we're in a restaurant and we see a mom out with her kids and the kids are all on some kind of device and mm -hmm. she's just kind of sitting there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes me just want to burst yeah. into tears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you guys never do that to me. Never. Mm -hmm. I mean. I know the feeling too. Um, by the way, how has, has fatherhood changed you? Oh, wow. It's definitely, you've heard it before. You just feel like your heart is outside of your body, just like running around in the world and you feel so much better. When you're when you're close to them, so I'm gonna shut it down there. That's all I can say. Um, we'll get emotional, but it's softened me, and I think it's allowed me to to really begin to hone in and lock in on the things that matter most. I feel like I've always had a general sense, a good sense of the things that matter in life, but but I think that it becomes more articulate when you have a child, and I think when you have a daughter specifically, you be, as a man, you see the harms of the world in neon, mm -hmm. so to speak, because of how much girls from a very young age have to navigate to have the best chance of being in their mm -hmm. whole full self by the time they're an adult. I mean, we're parenting young kids. Your, yeah. your kids are in, co in college and one's about to go off to college. Mm -hmm. How do you parent adult children? I mean, I parent them the same way out of the house that I parented them in the house. Which is? Which is, you know, are you getting enough sleep and you sound like you're sick and are you drinking tea yeah. and yeah. texting when you get home? Because even though I'll be asleep that way, when I wake up, I can see that you're home safe and sound. And, and I have an immense amount of appreciation for both of my older kids because they are embracing the things that I still need from them as opposed to mom, you know, come on, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine, you know. It's they still allow me to be the same mom to them, and it's not eye rolling. And there's a huge amount of understanding. Mm -hmm. I think that they are allowing me to occupy a space and kind of get used to them being away because they're also getting used to it too. It's you know, this is a yeah. whole new this landscape for all of us. Is it, may I ask, is it a different discomfort you leaving and traveling for work and all that compared to them leaving and going to college? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny too. And especially it's interesting when right now me being away. Mm -hmm. And so Henry and Danny are home mm -hmm. and then I'm in another time zone. And then Finn is somewhere and Hazel is somewhere. And we all were on a FaceTime the other day <laughs> together, all of us. Mm -hmm. And it was so fun and that we made it work because sometimes with the time differences, yeah, doesn't so always work. And that, yeah. and it was like this, like, gift that we had yeah. these yeah. four minutes of yeah. all mm -hmm. looking at each other and various I think you know I might have had like a towel on my wet head and like <laughs> and it was just so and that we were all so happy to be together in that way it's just it's so sweet I mean I'm so proud of them I'm proud of all of us that we kind of have gotten to this place and are still so deeply in love and in, and in interest with each other. I love your family I love how you speak <laughs> about them every time you talk about them I feel like you're home. Like, mm. like. Thanks. I agree with that, actually. Don't you think? I, I, it's so absolutely re true. Like, look, yeah. you have to do a junket. Yeah. You have to talk about your film, and mm -hmm. we are excited to talk about mm -hmm. it because I think this film is going to be amazing and everyone's going to go. But I swear, every time it happens with you, especially, because when I interviewed you with Clooney, you laughed and joked about everything. And then the minute you talked about your kids, it was like, I'm home. Yeah. I'm home, like that's really your North Star. Yeah, well, it all starts with Danny Motor. You mm -hmm. know, he's just really <clears throat> our anchor and our person yep. And, yep. and in the most beautiful way, our, the captain of our ship, mm -hmm. you know, truly. And it's not like giving it all away to him. It's just that for me, understanding how deeply felt life could be really started with him and my understanding of him as a person. Wow. Get her a tissue. <laughs> I love love, man. When it's yeah. real, I can feel it. I, yes. I swear, a couple of things that you guys both said, yeah. I could feel chills up and down my body. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. that.
Anyway, um, thank you. I just want you to listen to one thing. This is a song um, that Jenna and I have released. This is you. Feeling it? I feel you. I feel you feeling it. Wow. How? Okay, first of all, when did you have time? We did it because we, first of all, we did it for fun and then it, it's gonna be a every Christmas. That okay. is hilarious. So this is an original song. You, you wrote it. Okay. We're getting no compliments here. No, no I'm no, really no, impressed. No, I'm, I'm, I'm totally I'm impressed. Just, like, Congratulations. <laughs> Watch out, Mariah Carey. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, ladies in blue. We all came separate and we all dressed the same. So I don't know what that means, but good uh, minds think alike. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you know that I talk a lot about health, and I was saying to um, my friends that, of course, health at your age, at your age, and at my age is very different. What are the issues that your age group is talking about? Well, I'm 33, so majority of my friends in my age group are thinking about having kids, having kids, or on their second or third child. I feel like the thing that we talk the most about in our friend group and also on BDA Baby is just overall burnout. Um, and that's burnout with your kids at home, it's burnout in relationships, and burnout with trying to make everything perfect, your friendships perfect, your work life perfect. It's just like an overall sense of burnout and a need for support in that. So when you go to the, your doctor, for a checkup or when you're talking to your doctor about burnout are you talking to her about sex are you talking to her about pregnancies i feel like it's definitely hormones pregnancy right now at this phase of my life there's a lot of questions now when i go in about mental health specific questions how are you feeling at home how are you feeling in pregnancies how are you feeling postpartum there's a lot more awareness and conversation about that with doctors i feel like and also in my friend group then I feel like you reflect on having that kind of conversation when you are our age. When I talk to you, you're talking about a kind of a whole different group of women who haven't had children, who are uh, talking about, should I freeze my eggs? Uh, how do I not get pregnant? Or should I be getting pregnant? Or should I be freezing my eggs? You're talking about PCOS. You're talking about endometriosis. You're talking about different things than I hear your age group are talking. So what is your group? talking about young women that you talk to what do they talk about when they talk about women's health yeah well it's interesting because i know you're saying well i'm 33 and given my age and i'm thinking to myself i'm 32 <laughs> and given my age we're so far apart yeah <laughs> but my friends and our conversations like could not be more different yeah um a lot of my friends are working and trying to kind of figure out big life choices as to whether they want to freeze their eggs or a lot of them are you know not married yet so they're kind of struggling with questions about whether they're with the partner they want to marry and if they're making the right choices there. struggling with financial issues i have one girlfriend or two girlfriends now that are married and the rest of them are really just trying to grapple with how to be in the healthiest relationship they can be in, how do they feel their best, whether it's mentally, emotionally, or physically, and kind of what that you know lifestyle and world looks like for them. It just feels like a couple years ago that most of our conversations were about birth control. 
right? You know, yeah. what's the right form of birth control? Should you be on the pill? Should you be on an IUD? What's new out there? Then all of a sudden it jumped to, sh my gynecologist is telling me to freeze yeah, my eggs, yeah. like <laughs> overnight. But it seems to jump really quickly from like your early 20s like, that happened to me because like, I went in after you had a baby and I went to my gynecologist and I was like, do I need to be freezing my eggs? Like, how much time do I have? And she, I think I was 27 or just turned 28. And she was like, you have so much time. Don't worry about it. I go in for 30. And she's like, so let's talk now about freezing your eggs. And I was like, hold on a second. I thought I had some time here. And every year it gets more like, I think we really should freeze your eggs. It's like an insurance policy. The pressure is on. Meet with this person which I, to me, I was definitely unprepared for. Do you feel overwhelmed by all of these topics about health? You're talking about birth control, freezing eggs, infertility, endometriosis, PCOS, pregnancy loss yeah. is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's overwhelming. I think that it's beautiful to be able to have the level of openness that I feel like our generation has with friends, but being able to have the support that and the openness that you have with friends is, I think, great. How big is sexual health in your generation? Like when I was your age, I never went, well, first of all, I had a male OBGYN. I know that's shocking to I both. Do. I cannot even imagine. <laughs> I just don't, to me, it's also like you want somebody who's able to relate to well, there how weren't, you're feeling. I, I agree, of but I know that you were like, of I can't course. believe you. I was like, well, there were no women, you know, OBGYNs at the time. You know, I remember well after having four kids, I talked to my OBGYN and he said, you know, how's your sex life? And I was like, oh my God, I want to talk to you about that, you know? <laughs> but you guys speak pretty openly about all of that, right? I mean, we speak openly about it, but also, you know, we've spoken to you about those things yeah. and that's definitely generational differences sure. because you would never have talked to your mom about never. that. So. Well, I think there's also luckily, like Catherine was saying, that there's so much more information today than there ever was. So there's just, there's a lot more awareness, I think now, and I think Luckily, actually, from people in your generation were raising the alarm about, I'm having these health consequences right now. Could it be from the food I'm eating? Could it be from the products I've been using since I was a teenager? Mm -hmm. And I think that luckily people have been responding with putting in a lot of money into research about these things. You, Christina, have done these films, one dealing with Adderall, one dealing with Xanax. How big are those issues in your age group? Yeah, I mean, movies also sprouted out from my personal experience uh, mm -hmm. with medications. I knew I wasn't the only person going through those experiences. I think that the mental health landscape has evolved so much just even within the past few years, and the mm -hmm. level of awareness is amazing and so now we're able to have conversations around these topics without the kind of weight of am i being judged what are they thinking about the fact that i'm taking these medications but i actually find a lot more people my age today going into therapy whether it's like cognitive behavioral therapy or going on retreats or trying mm -hmm. acupuncture or trying to change their lifestyle or their diet to do all those things before they start taking medication. The other thing that seems to be kind of when we talk about women's health, there's been a real surge in uh, women and alcohol, particularly women, you know, kind of who've had kids maybe, or women who find themselves in their 30s and 40s, a huge uptick in that and that conversation around your health. Uh, do you hear a lot about that? I feel like that's all over social media. It's all over social media. All over social media is like, you know, drinking when you have kids, drinking when your kids go to sleep, looking forward to that drink at the end of the day because of the chaos that is in your life between working, between going and, you know, being a present parent, being a partner, like there's so much. Um, I saw somebody actually post recently about, you know, kind of going against that because so many people were posting about going to games with you know their children's soccer games and having alcohol in their cups or being able to go uh, after you drop your kid off at school and getting a drink in the morning like those kinds of conversations and somebody recently posted we see people doing this but it's actually not funny yeah. um, there's a larger conversation to be had there which is why do you find yourself needing to have that drink so we have you know in our family we're I think, you know, not the same as everybody that we talk about alcohol a lot. You've always raised yeah. us with a very open communication about 
alcohol, about drugs, about what that does to you. Um, also understanding that, you know, as we grew up, that we would experiment with certain things and that we could be lucky enough to be open with you and honest and also have our siblings in that. But also, you know, there is, as you get to certain chapters of life, there seems to me, especially since entering motherhood, that there is definitely like a big push of moms being like, these kids, they're crazy. Like, I need to have a drink. And yeah. that's something that I see widespread across America. How big a deal is it like, you know, you're at 26, everybody goes, you know, they're having to be responsible for their own insurance, like finding a doctor who's in the network, how much this all costs, uh, foregoing doctor's appointments because of the cost of it. Because yeah. I know a lot of, actually, it's unfortunate, I know a lot of girlfriends that forego kind of annual physicals. A lot of times because they either can't afford insurance or they're not getting it through their job. Um, I think a lot of them are lucky to get it through their job, though, too. But I think that just what you're talking about, kind of the advocacy and awareness of trying to find someone that's right for you. Yeah. But also something that I personally struggle with myself is, like, you have to be your own self-advocate. Yeah. And that takes a lot of, like, internal kind of fortitude and confidence in yourself because you can easily be swayed or easily be silenced in a lot of ways when it comes to being with a doctor or practitioner. And I think that that kind of goes hand in hand with trying to find the right doctor or trying to find the right prescription or trying to find the right PT or whatever it is, the right acupuncturist, is being able to really now at this point understand that you have to be your own advocate. When you look at women um, my age or women who are in their 50s, women who start talking about aging, uh, does that freak you out or do you think like, uh oh, or um, I already I, feel like I'm having the conversation about aging, but I'm also you, you, I've been you're like right. since I was 16. I'm like, do I see a wrinkle coming in? Oh my god! I say to my friends, oh my gosh, these girls in their 30s talk more about being old than I do. I mean, we are really lucky that we have like we look at you, and I'm like, that's goals, you know? Like you Thank are you, very on top of your mental health, your physical health, yeah. your spiritual health. I think, you know, you and dad both are incredible examples of people who are aging with grace and doing it really, really well. I'll let Christina speak for herself, but I feel like, you know, I mean, I'm excited. I think like you- You're you, excited to get older. Well, I think if you are given the ability to get older, looking at it as a gift, you know, yeah. like yeah. you you talk about it in a way where it shifts people's perspective, not like, Ugh, my God, I'm getting, it's like, oh my God, I'm getting old. It's, I get to get older right. and I get to be on this planet and watch my children live their lives and build their lives and see grandchildren and have fun adventures and have girls nights and, you know, go on these fun trips with my family and, and you know, also be there to be in communication with my kids as they grow and they find their own interests. Do you feel like there's, that we have an open communication about your guys' health journey, do you feel like you get all your questions answered or you know what to expect? Or Super open. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I agree. Like Catherine said, I think that you and dad are kind of goals and have set a great example for all of us as to kind of really how to engage with aging, how to embrace it and how to really, you know, live life to the fullest up until like the very end, like grandma and grandpa did. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also like we're really lucky to be able to have open and honest communication yeah. with yeah. our mom. Yeah. I think we are really lucky that we can come to you and say, hey, I'm feeling this way. Did you ever feel that way? Or do you know what I should do if I feel that way? And you have always been really open with sharing all of your experiences throughout yeah. your entire life and beyond about mental health, physical health, spiritual health, and just being open about it. winning actress Anne Hathaway has been a force in Hollywood for more than two decades. Hi. The movie star is known for her wide-ranging talents both on and off the big screen, from being an advocate for women's rights to a fashion icon. Feel free to call me Annie, by the way, yeah. if you want. And at 40 years old, the mother of two is embracing who she is. So a couple of years ago, you said, what did I say? when I look back on my 20s, I just remember being afraid of everything. Mm -hmm. And in my 30s, I'm actually excited about things. Yeah. So now you've been at your 40s. Mm -hmm. What would you say about it so far? I'm cherishing. You know, I'm cherishing. Um, I'm, I'm right at that point where I actually I do know I have a much better sense of how I like to do things and a much, much deeper respect that there's more than one way to do things. So I really respect how other people want to do things. And I also am really excited about pursuing my own take on things. I'm so much better at sharing. Mm. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm kinder to myself. I feel mm. like I'm kinder to others. And I just, I don't know, it's, can I get super nerdy for a second? I'm here for okay. all of it. So if you think about culture, we think about culture, mm -hmm. we often think about it as it relates to art, books, music, all of those wonderful things that are humanities okay. oriented. But culture is also a scientific thing, like in a Petri dish, like you drop okay. something in a Petri dish and you watch it develop. Okay. Well, the more we live in a culture in which age is accepted, not put down, not sell, not just that, but just accepted as a function of life, the more opportunity we have to develop as people mm. for like for the entirety of our lives. And that's a gift. Such an amazing opportunity to get to talk about all of this as I'm living it. Mm. Because I don't have a lot of wisdom about it yet. I have 40 years of being alive and you mm -hmm. know, hopefully I'll have way more than that. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'm trying to bring all the parts of myself with me wherever I go. I have a friend, we love each other so much and we sit there and we watch our kids and we have a phrase that we say to each other, which is God willing future grandmas. Mm. So for me, the idea that who I'm going to be, if I'm lucky enough, mm. lucky enough to be a woman experiencing age in her 80s, mm. I'm building her right now. And I get really excited about that. And that it doesn't mean you ever land anywhere. It just means you're always developing. You're just too cute to be together. Growing up as a teenager in Hollywood, Hathaway quickly rose to fame, becoming a household name. I started in this business when I was 17 years old mm. uh, in a very different era. And there was this perception that there was going to be a cliff. 
and that clip was a really young age. Mm. And the world's changed since then. I'm like, whoa, no one's ever had as many opportunities as me. Mm. Like just in terms of just something as like how nourished I am mm. in my life, like just just nourishment and the education that I, I was exposed to. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to make it about that. I'm aware of how privileged I am. Mm. What I'm trying to say is I was invested in and I'm not ready to give up that investment just mm. because of a number, you know, and especially not because of a number that exists out in the world that someone else has a feeling about. I'm interested in my own feelings about it. Mm. I'm interested and and I'm interested in defining it for what it is. And then I'm really excited for someone younger than me to define it for themselves, too. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, don't you feel like we've always been passing the baton to each other? We're all starting to say, wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. What about what I think? <laughs> <laughs> what about what I think about what I want to do? That. Because I love that. I don't know how you feel, but do you feel like you're getting better? Are you kidding me? Like, We're just getting started. I, you know? No, Thank absolutely. You. And Thank I wouldn't you. trade anything. You get into a place in your life where you're like, I don't feel, I don't feel new in every single situation. I feel like now I can actually focus on other people. Mm. I can focus on how to take care of other people. I can take other people in. Mm. Whereas when I, you know, was first starting out, I was so nervous. And so, I mean, it's still nervous. I can feel it. For Hathaway, age is nothing but a number. Let's say on social media, I post a picture, or you post a picture, and people say, oh, you're aging gracefully, or oh, you look so good for your age. Do I say, thank you, or am I leaning into it by doing that? Are we leaning into it by, think, are we leaning into the hype of aging? Do you think about age? Hmm. But I don't. No, I don't. this is good. No, Tell I me. I don't think about it. I never have. I think some of it was because I was a teenager who spent a lot of time around adults. Hmm. And as a result, I had to get really comfortable with the idea that I was a different age than other people, hmm. you know? And so, and, and the gifts in my life that have resulted because I was friends with somebody who was 30, 40, 50 years older than me, hmm. you know? And so I just... I just think that's people's way of talking. I, I think talking about someone's appearance is a really personal thing. To me, aging is another word for living. Ooh. And so if people want to pay you a compliment, it's nice. But also, whatever the hype is, I'm interested in what's beyond the concept of hype. I completely get that. And now I'm thinking, how do I put that into play? Who do we have on the other day? I talked to Michelle Yeoh. Oh. Um, she's awesome. She's the right? Coolest. She's the actual coolest. Winning awards. Um, who else do we talk to? Jamie Lee Curtis, you know? And so mm -hmm. I feel like, and again, I don't know if it's just that I'm more aware because of the season that I'm in, in this 40 club, or if we are collectively showing that we're just, we're, we're still in it and there's mm -hmm. so much more. I think, and the question is, and why would you assume we wouldn't be in it? Mm. Why was it ever assumed that we couldn't be in it? And I think that, look, I, the world's a big place. There's a lot of people in it, but I'm really happy to be talking to you about it. And um, all you can ever do is be present with somebody and be supportive of them and uplift them, right? I, absolutely. You mentioned the word presence. How do you stay present? What do you do? Well, um, you forgive yourself when you I feel like that's number one. I feel like the first thing, the first like rule of thumb in everything is just know that perfection is an illusion. And just because you're not doing it perfectly doesn't mean you're not doing it. We're made very nervous by the idea that we're doing it wrong. I get made so nervous by yeah. it. It's a really, I think we all maybe have a loud critical voice in our, in our heads. I don't know where it comes from. And that's one of the other great things about aging is you get more time to speak to that voice. You get more mm -hmm. time to heal it. You get more time to soften it and work with it. But like, look, I'm fully aware that I'm burst out in hives right now. Like it's when I get yes. really nervous. I get really, really nervous when I talk. But you're talking I, about something so amazing. What makes, what's the nervous part of it? The nervous part is my journey. Oh. And so I feel like, and I don't know where it comes from, but I don't judge it. Um, I'm, I'm dancing with it. And part of it, one of the things that I do to stay really present is I have practices that allow me to be kind to myself in moments when maybe in the past I wouldn't have known how to be kind to myself. Mm. And so I don't think there's any one way to do it. I think some people pray, some people chant, some people take a deep breath, some people go for a walk, some people um, shop. Like yeah. I think I just think that or all of the above. <laughs> maybe a little bit all of the above. Maybe the connective thread through all of that is just do it gratefully. Mm. Maybe that's how you be present in it is you add something to it to allow it to play with something because it can play off of your stress or it can play off of your gratitude. Mm. And 
I feel really excited to be at an age now where I feel like, you know what, I'm not so interested in the stress part anymore. I think I tried that. I think I did that. I think we did our dance. But what if I can really set my gaze in the future on dancing with my gratitude? I don't know what's going to happen, mind you. I don't know if this is going to work, but I know that I feel better and I'm having a much better time and I'm, and I'm having an easier time doing it that way, if that makes any sense. No, it does. So then does it help you then, let's say you're juggling the kiddos or you're doing a project, like it, does it help you kind of be here now, if you will? There's so many things. I feel like there's, there's, there's so, so, so many things that, and, and again, it's like really, really, it's just different for everybody. And I think we're all looking for that magic bullet <laughs> that's gonna explain it and make it really, really simple and let it be clear. And that's, there's the line and you're either doing it or you're not, but that to me is, I think the quicker you can find something really funny, you know, the, 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 the more open you can be to it. And, and that's the thing, it's, there, it's never gonna look a certain way or be a certain way or feel a certain way. It's all gonna be happening at the same time. And you're lucky if you have a lot of stuff going on. And the question is, do you wanna, I don't know, do you wanna bank your shot off of anxiety and stress or do you wanna bank it off gratitude? Sometimes you're not in control over your anxiety and your stress and that's okay. But if you are in control of it, why not the other thing? Now, the movie star has taken on a new role in beauty as the global brand ambassador of Shiseido's Vital Perfection skincare line. Potential has no age. What inspired you to partner with Shiseido? Oh, I mean, it's always, it's always very exciting when, you know, you're aware of someone before they're aware of you. <laughs> that was funny. You know, that makes you feel good. So I've been aware of Shiseido for a while and I was really excited that they thought that I matched their values. Mm -hmm. I was really excited because uh, they're a company that's 130 years old. They have a legacy. I find them to be incredibly thoughtful, intelligent, caring, refined. And I was just thrilled and excited that they felt that I could be a part of that. I love it. There are a lot of projects you could take on, but this one it seems like you're passionate about in so many ways. I didn't know I was so passionate about it. Like mm. it just seemed like a really fun thing to do. And then when we got started to get into the process and discussing what we, what we were going to say with it. And then they said, Oh, so we think the tagline would be potential has no age. Mm. And I was just like, I love that and I love putting that out there and then I love to see where it goes next mm. you know it's because all we can do is um, make the world better for each other for ourselves and for anybody to our, the best of our knowledge and to anybody that's coming up behind us and I love watching these young people who have so much more freedom than mm. I had I love 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 watching it and I don't know just imagine what they could do if they never had the concept of a cliff or a shelf life or any of those things. Before Annie and I parted ways. Lightning round, ready? Okay, okay. Are you a texter or a caller? I'm both, but uh, but I'd love texting. Staying in or going out? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> a quote you live by. I live by a lot of quotes. Okay. 
big wheels keep on turning and proud Mary keeps on burning. Just came to mind. That. Okay, I like I've it. I've been singing it all day. Favorite song of the moment. I'm really into Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, that's a good one. Break My Soul by Beyonce. Mm, that's a fun one. And Taylor Swift, Antihero. Oh, those are good. Standout fashion moment. What my heart is telling me right now is my wedding dress by Valentino. That's a good one. Which wasn't a fashion moment. That was a life That's moment. That's a life moment. Best advice you've ever received. Oh, no, not ever. Sound um, advice or something that, you know, resonates. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to sound like such a cheese ball. No, I'm no. so sorry. No, this is awful. This is awful. But it's really good advice. What is it? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, it's really yeah. earnest is what it is. I know I know how earnest that is, and I know this, but I can't help but think that on the Today Show, you guys don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind it at all. And honestly, it's just good stuff. So good. <laughs> That's really good. Today, more than 20 years into her career, Anne Hathaway doesn't take anything for granted. To say that you started when you were 17 years old, mm -hmm. and now we're talking about life in our 40s, that's lucky, and I'm aware that I can't think of many people who get to say that, and I don't want to miss that. Blake Shelton is a country music legend with 12 studio albums and 28 chart-topping hits throughout his three decades of making music. Most recently, he said goodbye to The Voice after being a coach for 23 seasons. Yes! Do you miss the big red chair? No. <laughs> I, don't, I tell people, you know, I don't miss the job at yeah. all. It was time. Yeah to walk away, but I miss my family there. I mean, the, the, the crew and the cast and all the people behind the scenes, it became my family, yeah. you know. I've seen, I literally was with these people more than I was with my actual family yeah. for years, you know. And so uh, to just all of a sudden never see them again is, is, is weird. We saw some of your time off on the ranch. What does that time off feel like? That's how I recharge myself. When you're on that hamster wheel, uh, it's just one of those things where you feel like one day you look up and you look back and 10 years has gone by and you go, what did I do with those last 10 years? Oh, I sat in that chair. And as incredible as that was, I mean, it changed my life. It changed my life in every way you can think of for the better. But there's also just the, the stuff that you just miss. And it's time for me to start living life now and just taking things in and slowing way down, not thinking, man, all right, I've got, I've got a, a day and eight hours to be home. I really need more free time to be able to spend it with all these other projects that I've got going and do it in a way that they don't run me down. You have a personal life to look forward to. Yeah. We saw some of that play out in the speech that you gave to Gwen when she was receiving her star in the Hollywood yeah. Walk of Fame. Congratulations to my all-time favorite songwriter on your star. You deserve this and I love you. What is the best part about your life now that she's in it? Oh my God. I mean, the best part is laying down with her at night and, and waking up and she's there in the morning. I just didn't know that that was out there, that that was possible for that feeling to be out there, you know, that kind of relationship, that kind of friendship, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, uh, I thought I knew, but I didn't know, you know, and that's my fault. But uh, now that I do know, it is like, all right, now my life's starting. 
Now this is really where life starts for me, you know. Can we anticipate any more collabs between kids, you two? Children? <laughs> no, uh, kids. I actually was going to say collaboration. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, as long as I'm able to sing and record, I'm always going to want to record more with Gwen. I don't think either one of us want to feel like we're overdoing it or, or, or turning it into that. But it's stupid not to pursue it a little bit, you know, because first of all, it's a lot of fun. Second of all, I, I, we've recorded four songs together. You make it feel like Christmas. That may have been one of my biggest records I've ever been a part of. It comes back every year. Like That's one of the most exciting <laughs> things that I've ever been a part of is to have a Christmas song that comes back every year. It's like, oh my God, we did that. How helpful is it that you two are able to kind of help each other brainstorm, help each other understand the music industry and grow in that way? It's a gift, I mean, to be able to have uh, Gwen to, to bounce ideas off of, to have someone to lean on and go, and what do you think about this? What would you tour? Would you tour there if you were me? Like those are big, boring topics, but they're really Im Im important things uh, and important steps to make. You know, timing is everything in the industry, and to have someone who's just uh, has your best interest from the friend standpoint is incredible because uh, we both pretty much seen it all and done it all at this point. Another role he takes seriously is stepfather to Gwen's three sons, Kingston, Zuma, and Apollo. I've had step parents. I think it's in some ways a hard, a more difficult. I try to be careful about, you know, when to step in and, and be smart about when to step back. But no matter what, always be there if I'm needed. I met Blake on the site of his latest venture, opening a sixth Old Red this one right in the center of the Las Vegas Strip. I remember when we went to the opening of Old Red Nashville in 2018. Now, five years later, we're at the beginning of Old Red Las Vegas. Why did you decide to put down roots here? Believe it or not, at, at that grand opening in, in Nashville in 2018 was probably right about the time we started this project. I mean, that's how long uh, this has been in the works. Coming to Las Vegas is not something that you just decide to do in the next year you're there. If you do it that way, Las Vegas was a part of the plan because for one thing, I know that there's a couple of country bars, I think, in Las Vegas, and, and I've probably been to them, uh, but there's nothing, like, there's nothing like this in Las Vegas. What we've been able to do here is combine uh, the country music, uh, sound with that VIP experience yeah. that you can get in Las Vegas. For the country music family, the industry, Nashville, to have a home base now in Las Vegas, it's obviously a big deal for me. You're bringing the biggest representation of Southern hospitality to Vegas. That's yeah. pretty iconic. It is, I, you know, and that's the one thing that I've always heard from people. Like, when I'm in Las Vegas, like, there's nowhere to go hear country music, you know? I think that has changed over the years. There's been a lot, uh, you know, of residencies and things. But as far as just a place to come have a beer and maybe step away from the gambling for a minute yeah. and go, all right, I'm actually going to get something in return for my money. I'm going to get a beer this time and hear some country music. Now there's a place in, in Las Vegas. It's, and the, it's, it's the Blake it's Shelton huge. twist. That's yeah. right. This place is huge. It I is mean, huge. we're sitting right here on the on the stage floor right now. Uh, there's actually a, a, a working basement underneath us, but there's one, two floors that actually look down on this stage, and then there's a rooftop area. Uh, every floor has a bar, and of course that uh, third floor up there has the VIP experience and, and the suites yeah. and stuff. It's so just So we're where the performances are going to be. This is it. This is where I'm, This is it. I'm telling you right now, when, when we do our grand opening, I want to be the one uh, that breaks in this stage because I think it's going to be here for 100 years from now. and. I want to be the one who stepped on the stage for the first time. And Blake is stepping back onto stages across the country soon with a brand new tour kicking off in February. Well, your album came out in 2021, and then last year you had a single, Nobody, and fans loved it, not only because it was new, but because you brought back the mullet. <laughs> so any other throwback styles you're going to bring out for this tour? I probably will. Uh, I, but I don't know, probably if anything I bring back that's a throwback, it'll be some of my old records that I haven't sang in, in years, you know. I've just uh, been spending time lately listening to some of those old records, trying to get ideas for the show, and it's like, oh my God, I forgot about this song. And 
this song was actually a hit in 2002. How come I don't do it anymore? So I'll probably bring back a, a lot of that old school music that I just haven't done uh, in, in a lot of years because I've been on a hamster wheel for so long. I think it'd be a blast to dig out some of that old stuff. So it'll be a best of Blake Shelton I guess so. tour. Yeah. That's fun. The best I can do of Blake <laughs> Shelton. You're bringing Emily M. Roberts on tour with you. She yeah. was on season nine on Team Blake. Why is that so important to you? When she was on, on The Voice, uh, I remember uh, I was standing there off to the side with my manager watching her rehearse. And I told my manager, I said, hey, you ought to manage her. I mean, look at her. She's super talented. She's got so much charisma. She's beautiful. Like, that's a star standing there. And he goes, well, I'll talk to her. Seven or eight years later, he's been her manager all this time. And it's just now to a point where she's released a, a record and, and is ready to go out on tour. And of course, if she would have gone out on tour with anybody else, I would have been like, what the hell? Yeah. What about your old coach here, you know? So the fact that I get to bring her out and put her out on, you know, in these cities and uh, on the big stage is, is a, I love that. I, I love to be the one that, that uh, uh, gets to introduce her to you know a whole new live audience out there. Any new music we can expect? I never really stop recording. It's it's just something that I do sporadically. I'll call Scott Hendricks, my producer, or he'll reach out to me and go, "Hey man, let's just go cut these two songs that we've been thinking about and just get them done. They're, they'll be done when it's time, you know." And before I know it, which is where I'm at right now, I'll have eight or ten things recorded and 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 something that looks like an album, you know? And so I would say just based off of history and knowing how I've worked in the past, it's probably have some new music uh, in 2024. If that isn't enough, he's also got season two of his USA Network show along with his buddy Carson Daly called Barmageddon. It pits two celebrities against each other in classic bar games with a twist. My new favorite game is called Fool's Ball. And the first time we ever played the game was actually with Kelly Clarkson and Michelle Rodriguez and people were getting hit. If you see it happen to someone, it's entertainment. So Blake challenged me to a game called Wheel of Redemption. So if you lose, you get to spin the wheel. And this season, we finally had some people say, you know what, I'm just not doing it. I would rather lose because they've tasted the first one and it was so horrifying. All right, here we go. You started this whole thing, literally. Take oh, me out to the ball God. game. So take me out to the ball game is non-alcoholic beer. A little cocktail weenie, squirt of ketchup and mustard. You're really um, generous with those squirts. Well, listen, here at Barmageddon, we don't like to skim. Is that a raw hot dog? No, okay. bottoms up. <laughs> Whether it's games or music, Blake is all about folks having a good time. When customers come into an old red, what do you want them to feel leaving it? I want them to, to leave having found a new favorite artist every time, you know. I want them to realize that we're putting talent in these places that could be the next big thing. As you see a lot of these new artists coming up uh, in the next 
five, ten years, a lot of them are, have tell you that they cut their teeth at Old Red Nashville or Gatlinburg or Orlando. There's already been a lot of people that's come out recently that kind of got their start playing the Old Red there in Nashville, and so I think that it's just going to continue to, to grow, and maybe it'll be a place where you hop from one venue to the next, the, the next stepping stone. It's amazing because throughout everything we've talked about, mentorship has been the key line throughout that kind of leads your passion. And I think it's really, it's awesome that that's your dream and that you're living it out. It's the new voice, it's the new residency, it's the new Old Red. Yeah. So come on down. I will. To Old Red Las Vegas. <laughs>
But I want it to look like my office. I not want to look like a museum where there's a, something here and something here. And it's divided up into sections, but I just wanted to get the, I don't want to be stingy. Mm -hmm. I, wanted, I want the world to see the stuff. Why? Because it needs to be seen. Also, it might give people like a little insight to you know where my influences are from. You know who my heroes are, heroines, the the pantheon. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people here are gonna do their research. You know, got their phone. Like, who is this person? Who is this? It's education. It's it's educational. And what's interesting about this is that there, movie posters, there's sports memorabilia, but there's there's kind of politics, a politics, art, art. and it's all, all my. I was going to say this. These are all the parts of Spike Lee. Yes, and, and you know, one day they'll go back and trace, look in this exhibition where where this fit in with my, you know, body of work, mm -hmm. narrative and documentaries. I've been to your house and I've seen all a lot of this on the wall, but. I had no idea the depth of this. I mean, this is less than half of what you've got. When did this start? Starting when I was a kid in Brooklyn. My friends and I, we would go to Roosevelt Hotel because that's where the National League teams would stay. So Willie Mays, when the, when the Giants in New York, the Shea Stadium, we had the hotel waiting for Willie to come out. <laughs> we, got, we got the baseball cards. We got those three by five index cards too. Mm -hmm. When the Braves come out, wait, Hank Aaron, where's Hank Aaron? The Pirates, where's Clemente? Where's the Clemente? And also, besides the sports, I collected Marvel comic books. I, now, I like DC. I was more of a DC. I, I you them, like Daredevil? I did like Daredevil. So where did, where did this love of film come from? When, how did that start? Well, the plants, the plants was, were planted early. My father hated Hollywood films. Hated them. So I'm the eldest, so I was my mother's movie date. That's how it happened. Now, plants don't grow and bloom right away. So we had to plant the seeds. Sure. So it was to a college that those seeds came out. But going in the movies, I, I didn't even know. About I just went to the movies. That's yeah. it. I didn't think about who's directing, who's writing it. You know, you look at the, the, the people on the screen, but not behind the screen. So. It wasn't until I was in college, went to Morehouse College, that, uh, that I had to choose a major. And that major was mass communications. Film, print journalism, radio, photography. And Morehouse, Morehouse didn't have that major. I threw that major across the street at Clark College. So that's, that's where it started. As you started to think about this, you know, maybe becoming a director, becoming, moving into film, and your dad was, was a jazz musician. Yeah. Did that impact your directing? You know, the... It didn't impact my directing, but I knew I had a great, I just grew up having a great appreciation for jazz. Mm -hmm. So it's been reflected in, you know, almost all the films I've done, even the films I did without my father doing the score. When you do these films, and in the beginning, you were in some of your movies. Yeah. yeah. The only reason I was in She's Gonna Have because the first film, because we didn't have any money to pay anybody else. But behind us, you see some game-worn Jordans. Mm -hmm. And because of the character I played, Mars Blackman, that's how me and Mike got hooked up with the uh, commercials to change the whole game. Michael, Mars, and MJ. So it's funny how things work. Did you ever think that maybe acting again? No. <laughs> I do them. I knew the commercials with with with, <laughs> with Sam, Barkley, and Magic. But I knew Mars. I wasn't have to act. Mm -hmm. So Nike's agency, they saw she's gonna have it. So it was their vision to pair my character Mars from she's gonna have it with the goat. Michael Jordan, and, and it, it changed everything. You know, Nike went to the stratosphere. Yeah. In fact, before I really doing the right thing, people only knew me, didn't know who I was, just that 
crazy guy in the commercial mm -hmm. of Michael Jordan. Where are we going? What's the future of filmmaking? You know, when you kind of start looking at AI and all this stuff, where, where are we going? AI, that's the thing that scares me. Does it? I mean, just these stories and novels and movies, it's not science fiction today. Yeah. That stuff is here. And as far as the arts go, I just think that it's very dangerous where a soulless, non-human being is thrust into the art world. There's a lot of stuff about copyright, you know, and ownership. I'll just say a straight up theft. Posters, the movie posters. Now, of course, they're the you know your movies in there, but not all of them. But not all. That's what I was going to say. I think people would be surprised to see how many other movie posters there are. Are those movies that? There's nothing in this ex exhibition that does not mean something to me. But I've been very, I've been lucky. Let me tell you a story. So my films are showed worldwide. So when it comes out, I got to get on a plane. So. I was in Rome, I forgot what film it was. And my publicist, I, I asked my publicist, do you know Fellini? Yeah, I know him. I said, can you call him up, see you at dinner with me? Tonight, come to this restaurant. So for like four years in a row, every time I went to Rome, I was having dinner with Fellini. And every time I went, not the first, the, the other three times, I had posters in the sign. <laughs> so you see the posters signing me from Fellini. La Dota Vita, eight and a half, La Strada, signing me from Federico Fellini. When you're sitting across from Frederick, from Fellini, <laughs> what, what are you, what? He was just, he, he's, I mean, he's funny. You he had me dying. And we have like that red wine, Italian. <laughs> We're in Rome, drinking wine, and I'm sitting across the table with Fellini. I'm like, bam! <laughs> Scorsese? Because, because when you, and you were in film school, because I, look, I, the, these world cinema, I was introduced to until I was in graduate film school, NYU. But when you see these, these great films and you're able to know them, and they're signing stuff to you too, I mean, that's like, and they see my films too? You know, it's not, I'm some, I'll give you a line from Scorsese. Not, not like I'm some Mama Luke of the year. <laughs> Mama Luke. No Mama Luke's over here. Speaking of which, I'm looking at, I mean, Kahende Wiley. Yes. This, is, I mean, this, this piece is spectacular. Yeah. If you had to pick, what's your favorite? Is, is, there, is there a favorite piece of, or group? Well, there is, uh, it's not, I'm not going to pick one, but. Grouping. The net, one of the nets from game seven, May 8th, 1970, versus Los Angeles Lakers. The Willis Reed or, and Walt Frazier game. I got the net from that game. I was there too, 13 years old. Wow. What a sports, what, 
because there, it, it's a huge representation here. What does sports, especially New York sports, mm -hmm. mean to you? Well, my father, besides being a great musician, composer, he loved sports. He always, he always tell us, me and my siblings, how great an athlete he was. So my father was a Dodger fan, like all other black people back then. But that, my, love, my, mom, my father was taking me to the garden, the old garden, 8th Avenue. Yeah. So that's where my love for Knicks came from. He was taking me to Knicks games. And like, me and my father were not sitting courtside. <laughs> we were in the last row. But you were there. I was there. So I just think about it. I was sitting in the last row at the garden, the courtside. Yeah. And I got this thing from the garden. This will be my 33rd or 32nd or 33rd years of season ticket holders. When you first walked this, once it, everything was hung, mm -hmm. what were your thoughts on it? I was thinking about my parents because mm -hmm. my father just died, you know, in uh, May. My mother died while I was a sophomore in college. So they're a great part of who I am is because who they were. And they were art. My love of sports comes from my father. Music. My mother was a cinephile. So I'm really a product of uh, not just my parents, but the legacy of, mm -hmm. of my ancestors. So, and then a lot of my, my siblings work us here too, you know. So that is my, my brother David's photographer. So many of his photos are here too. What would they think of it? They'd be proud. Yeah. Because it's about legacy and just keeping it going, you know. You just gotta, and everybody, you know, every generation, let's keep it going. Go high and high and I expect the same from South from Jackson. I know you expect the same thing for your children too. You know, we just want, Go, go beyond what we've done. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it going. Yeah, and, and what's interesting about this, too, is, you know, it, it's in different sections. It, it, there's very personal stuff. Yeah, the family section is very personal. My father did a score for all my films in NYU graduate film school. Then she's going to have it. School days, do the right thing, more better blues. So that's, I just, we, I, my siblings, it's not just me. Yeah. My siblings and I, we grew up in a musical household. And there is a musicality to your work. Uh, my father's side of family is uh, all his siblings, parents, grandparents, just a musical background. But what's funny is we were growing up, and my father would come in the house, and we hear Motown and the Beatles, turn that bad music off. He was a jazz purist. I mean, we had, we had like, we wouldn't we were turn up, we were like, Turn it down and put it in yeah. right to the, the little transistor radio. So how did that household mm -hmm. kind of influence who you, you've become? Just grew up. I mean, the best example, if anybody's seen Crooklyn, that's, that's the Lee family growing up in Brooklyn, New mm -hmm. York. So my father at one time was a go-to bassist. And so my mother had to work, so she got a job at St. Anne's in Brooklyn Heights. And she supported the whole I'm, I'm the first of five. So she would work all day, come home, cook, grade papers. But she had a great belief in my, in my father's music, so she supported him. This is my father, Bill Lee. And uh, this is a letter from the vice president giving her condolences of my father's uh, passing. And this is my mother. It's funny. This thing here, somebody threw it out. It was, a, it was a, right next to my office in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Just threw out this thing. I said, what? I could use this. So I knew I had this picture of my mother. She just had this photograph put oh. with this. And it's my mother's mother, Mama. Oh. She lived to be 100. Wow. And she put me through Morehouse NYU Graduate Film School. For 50 years, she taught art and saved the Social Security checks 50 years for her grandchildren's education. So I'm the oldest. I had first dibs. <laughs> and, I, and 
and that's me. Wait, you are a cutie. Look at you. <laughs> that's fantastic. Dear Ma, that's you called. Mm -hmm. Dear Ma and Father Lee, your grandson is here. He weighed the last night at six pounds and eight ounces at 7.51 p.m. The Lee characteristics are definitely there. He looks nothing like anyone on my side of the family. He has those big, long hands, music, musicians, of course, like Bill's, with my father. Father Lee's coloring or oh, black spiky hair. Wait, is that where Spike came from? No. <laughs> <laughs> His Spike was a tough baby, but. And wait, he's a homely little rascal <laughs> right now. I love the pieces. <laughs>
I'm not having no more kids. <laughs> and uh, just got to keep it going. And they're both artistic, you know, doing their thing. Uh, Jackson's working now 40 acres. Satchel's in grad school in Chicago for photography. She's a great photographer. And uh, just keep it going. Mm -hmm. Just keep it going. And just, we're lucky because if you, if you can make a living doing what you love, you're blessed. Because yeah. I don't think it's an overstatement to say the majority of people on this God's earth go to their grave having slaved the job they hated. So, you know, we're blessed. There's going to be some small kid who comes in here. How small? <laughs> well, big enough so that they don't touch anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> but some kid's going to come in here. He's going to see this. She, he or she's going to see this. Mm -hmm. What do you want them to take from this? Well, I hope the parents can explain in terms their children, their young children, who understand, you know, just give them a little bit of history, not not the you know that. Just plant little seeds, maybe. That's the thing. That maybe there's something here that they might want to. Will it be photography, sports, politics, politics. You know, one of my favorites is Shirley Chisholm, first black from Brooklyn, yep. ran for president of the United States. I remember. What do you want people to know about Brooklyn? You could say that same question of what I want people to know about my films. I've always been in the mind state like, people are gonna get what they want from your film, so I, I've always let something happen, you know, some controversy. Try to explain the film. I just, you know, I respect the audience's opinion, what they see and what they don't see, so I let them like, if that's what you got from that, cool. And I would say the same thing for this, that depending on who you are, you're gonna get you know, different responses to what are on these walls here. We're all different. Who you are is gonna be reflected in what you like and dislike, mm -hmm. what you respond to. Would it be safe to say that if Spike Lee hadn't grown up in Brooklyn, we would have a much different Spike Lee? Yes, I, I like the full confession. I was not born in, right. but I was born in, I'm a Grady baby. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, moved to Brooklyn. But I would not be the person who I am if I had not grew up here in Brooklyn. What are you most proud of, Spud? I'll go back, oh, I get Tanya. I mean, her document just went, got nominated for an Emmy. Aftershock, she's doing her thing. Uh, doing her creative thing, producing documentaries, writing, and, and, and just the whole, the 
the Lee family, my children. So that's that's really you know the foundation. You know your family. Yeah. You know that's what matters most. And as you look back, any regrets? Anything you? Oh, I mean, there are a lot of regrets. <laughs> but the funny one is, is that, you know, in the summertime, I'm in Marlins Vineyard and Oaks Bluff and the main street of Circuit Avenue. One day this guy saw me, he said, come here, Spike, I want to show you something. So, just, so I woke him, he opens, opens the trunk of his car and these ugly looking things. I said, what is that? He said, they're Crocs. I want to invest. There's a little bit of money, but I'm, 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 uh, I'm trying to get this thing, you know. I said, what are those? Are we call them Crocs. I said, I'm sorry, sir. I mean, I can't do that. <laughs> Big regret. He wanted me to invest. He wasn't asking for a lot of money either. Yeah. But they you, just look kind of funny to me, so I, I passed it up. But you did okay. Who do you think people think Spike Lee is? Depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, uh, and, uh, that's, that's the answer. That's the answer right there. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. <laughs> First of all, it's so good to see you. When you walk in, it's like sunshine has arrived in our little dark room. It's your season. Christmas is here. So question first, is your Christmas tree up? Oh, of course. My Christmas tree was up before Thanksgiving. We, yeah. And the day after Thanksgiving, we turned all the Christmas lights on in my yard, in my house. I mean, yeah, so I'm always about Christmas. Now, I have, one, wait. I have one other question for you. When do you take all of those Christmas decorations The first down? week after uh at first of the year. So you feel Sometime like Sometime within that year, yeah. I'm already going. Sometimes I'll keep a few little things. My birthday's the 19th of January. Of course. Sometimes I'll keep a few little things in the house to think, well, I'll celebrate my birthday with, with a little tree, maybe in one room or Sweet. so. Sweet. <laughs> you, you've had so many Christmas memories since you were a little girl to today. Is there a Christmas that kind of stands out to you? Like, a lot of people say it was maybe before, even before all the fame and before all that. Like, is there one that sticks out to you and you say, that Christmas. Well, that memory I actually made a movie of called Circle of Love. That was when my mom and dad had been married for years, had a house full of kids, and mom had never had a wedding ring because they married when they were 15 and 17 years old. So I remember all of us making up money to help buy mama a wedding ring, mm -hmm. and we all got to be part of that and remembering how special that was back there in the country and mama, you know, being so happy and surprised mm. about a ring and it made a wonderful story. But I have tons, tons of memories. A little yeah. brother that was born around Christmas time because we always wanted our walking, talking dolls. Mm -hmm. Mama said, well, you got one that really pees and really cries <laughs> and really does all the stuff that you're wanting that little doll to do. Here you are. So I have a lot of precious memories being from the country and, you know, being back Back oh. in the backwoods where you make your own fun, you make your own Christmas. And you make your own memories. Boy, yeah. you got some good ones. I want to talk about that, but I want to talk about this movie that you have out called Dolly Parton's Mountain Magic Christmas. This is all parts of you. <gasps> Dolly Parton, Christmas, Dolly. I'm starting to cry just thinking about it. It's got all your friends. It's a beautiful story of putting on a show. 
It's a musical. It's a movie. When I saw it, I was like, that is so Dolly. That's all of it. Well, we're so excited about the, the movie. Of course, we did it at Dollywood, which is my theme park up in mm-hmm. East Tennessee, where I was born and raised. It's like a, a movie set anyway, some sure. of everything. And so we invited all these wonderful guests, like Jimmy Fallon, uh-huh. uh, you know, who's on the show. And so we've had all these great you know, people on and great actors. We did a show about, a, it's like a show within a show, because mm-hmm. I think people are real interested in knowing what goes on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. So we made it where we really made it like how the show was going on, all the things that can go wrong behind the scenes, but then we actually did the numbers as if they were rehearsals, getting ready to actually do it live sort of thing. So it's a lot of drama, it's a lot of comedy, a lot of meaningful songs, a lot of meaningful places, stuff for kids, you know, we got sing-alongs with the kids, so, uh, and getting to do it at home was great for me. I mean, the list of celebrities is pretty amazing. It's Willie Nelson, it's Jimmy Allen, it's your goddaughter, Miley Cyrus. Cyrus, And her her daddy, And her daddy, Billy, Billy (laughs) Billy Ray. And we've got Jimmy Fallon. I mean, the list is like, wow, wow, wow. Zach Williams doing our great Grammy winning song. There was Jesus, which is perfect for the show. And so, yeah, we got the Fallons and the Allens and 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 Willie was a dear thing to me to get to work with Willie again. We've been friends since we were both fairly young in Nashville. Was it so fun? It it seemed to me, there are a lot of sets that seem like work, but this thing seemed different to me when I was watching it. Because I I got to see uh, parts of this already and it looked electric, like you'd want to see this on Broadway kind of thing. Oh, well, good, and you might. But I had a lot of my family participate, sure. a couple of my sisters, Cassie and Rachel, a lot of my nieces, my little grandnephew, Liam, plays the little elf. And so we've just got all kinds of stars, all kinds of wonderful actors playing the parts of the people behind the scenes. So you and Jimmy Fallon have a song. It's called Almost Too Early for Christmas. Okay, you heard the song. What was the first thing you thought when you heard it? It's almost too early for Christmas. Why don't we see how it goes? Well, first of all, there was a little backstory to that. Jimmy was going to be on my Christmas show. He said, let me send you the song and see what you think. And he sent that to me, though, like in September. And so it was called Too Early for Christmas. I thought, wow. What a great idea for a song. It's almost too early for Christmas because the Halloween decorations are still out and the Christmas haters and all. So he (laughs) sent me this song and I just loved it. He said, would you sing on it with me? Because we'd done Mariah Carey's song in my Christmas album of All I Want for Christmas is You. So I knew he could sing good and we sounded good (laughs) together. I just love him and he sings great. He's just an all-around great guy. Isn't he? I know, and y'all sitting in that booth singing that song was so cute. I loved it. I know. I loved it. It's so cute, yeah. Yeah. home for just a minute, if you wouldn't mind. So you were uh, the fourth child in your family of mm-hmm. how many kids? Well, there's 12. Mom and Daddy had 12 children, six boys and six girls. Mm-hmm. And so we had a big, big family and we lived back in the woods, but we had a good time. And, you know, we just loved each other. And Christmas, we made Christmas, whatever. We made it. Mama was always great to make everything seem fun and happy and made things more exciting than they were. And so we just <laughs> did what all country people do. We made the most of it. One of my favorite questions to ask somebody, 
because I feel it's, it's such a window into their life, is close your eyes for a second. Okay. And then imagine your childhood bedroom. Look around. See what around you see. In, with my eyes closed? I'm with looking, your, what okay, am look, I looking look, for? You're, you're, you're just looking at your room. And, or <laughs> who, who was okay. with you in your room? Were there anything on the walls? Were there multiple <laughs> kids? What, where did you sleep? Like, what was that childhood Actually, bedroom Actually, I don't have to close my okay. eyes to see that room. <laughs> because me. we, you know, in the early days, you know, we, we lived a few different places. But in the early days, you know, we, our house was really small. And mom and daddy had a little separate area where they slept but we mostly just piled up we had two or three beds and we had three or four kids sleeping in in bed and some of them peed in the bed and we just dealt with that too and it was cold in the winter we'd fan the cover get cold with that but anyway i just we just loved we, daddy get up building the fire in the mornings and, you know daddy is the fire hot you know is the fire hot <laughs> that's what y'all said up. Yeah, and so we didn't. He wouldn't let us get up till the house was warm because it was cold in our old houses. But anyway, I just remember things hanging on the wall would be like a picture of Jesus, or those little two little kids, two little orphans crossing a bridge, and you know those famous little pictures you see yeah. the Lord's Supper in the kitchen hanging on the wall, and or coats and hats and whatever. But we just lived a simple rural life like so many country people do. But but it was a house full of love and, and warmth. And so even though it was cold outside, it was warm mm. in our hearts. Who, who taught you about generosity? Oh, that was, I, that, I'm from a faith-based family. Yeah. My grandpa yeah. was a preacher. So when you grow up like that, you, you're supposed to, it's better to give than receive. Although as kids, we, we loved getting the presents, you know, whatever we got. But I think you, I just always had a, a giving spirit, the same as my mom and my dad were just good-hearted country people. Did you remember witnessing it, or was it just part of life? It was part of life. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it was, it was the way you survived in the country. Everybody yeah. had to help everybody else. If it was hog-killing time, the neighbors knew who, who, whose day that was, or if they would go help somebody in the crops. If it was, you know, if, you were, if your tobacco crop was money, which ours was, yeah. different neighbors would come to help, and they worked at different times. So it was just what, how you survive in the country, and I think you just kind of learn to do that, and that just follows you all the days of your life. Faith is such a big part of your life. When would you say that your faith was tested the most? Well, I think we all go through things in yeah. our lives, and I don't know for certain. There's been several times people always, and, and I talk about that in the special, people always act like I'm sort of an angel. I say, I'm no angel. I just play one on TV. <laughs> it's tough out there. I just try hard, and I try no matter what I'm going through, and we all go through all sorts of things, but I just try to rely on that faith mm. and believe that through God all things are possible mm. and that I'm going to survive and that I can survive because I have faith to do it. And a lot of people depend on me. And there's a saying in Scripture, I believe, that says, to whom much is given, much is required mm -hmm. or much is expected. So anytime I get to you know feeling too far down or feeling too sorry for myself, I just think about that and think, well, God has blessed me in so many ways, so why am I going to wallow around in my little dab mm -hmm. of sorrow? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. When uh, the holidays are festive, and I want to talk about all that, but it also does bring back memories for a lot of people. And in the country music world, Loretta Lynn and Naomi Judd passed oh, wow. this, this just, just over these past months. And loss is something that people deal with differently. And I just was curious how you deal with loss, like, of them. Well, those things are very special. Like with Loretta, I, she was very dear to me, like a sister. Same with uh, Naomi. Mm -hmm. uh, we, were, we, we were same age, and we loved the same things. And I loved her. And then I also lost Kenny Rogers, mm -hmm. three of my dearest mm -hmm. people in the business in a very short period of time. And I grieve over them almost like you do a family member. Mm -hmm. And I think of them, and but you try to keep the good memories. You don't try to try to dwell. You're sorrowful, of course, of the loss and when it happens. But then you allow yourself to just think of all the things that you remember about them that has added to your life, mm -hmm. and remember what they did for all the millions of people, the the lives that they touched. And so you just think you're just thankful that you got to know them. And that you got to share that time, like you said. There's that old song you talked about memories. Mm -hmm. There's that old mm -hmm. song of precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul, how they linger ever near me. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. and then it's like the line I love in that song is, "Precious memories 
unseen angels mm. sent from somewhere to my soul. And I think about that, you know, like those precious memories are like, they just flow in and out of you and mm. you remember special things Ugh. about them. And so I, I love that line in that song. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. I feel very weepy. Yeah. I don't know why I think well, just that's listening. Just like, that's just a beautiful touches. line. Yeah. And that's how it feels, you know, like uh, unseen angels. And you feel like they're still all around you. You feel and that? you feel them, yeah. Mm. Boy, that's so beautiful. I feel like the other, there's so many magical parts about you, but it's that you keep, um, you are evolving through life. And I've listened to Miley Cyrus, your goddaughter, say, I learned this from Dolly, I learned that from Dolly, I learned this from Dolly. <laughs> but then I was wondering, what is she teaching you? What are you learning about life from Miley? Well, I'm just learning Miley <laughs> as we go. Yeah. Well, I love Miley. And, I, you know, even when Miley goes through Miley's things, when back when she was making her transition from the Hannah Montana mm -hmm. little thing, trying to get, to grow up and yeah. people were not allowing her that. And, and I would, they were telling me, you gotta talk to Molly. I said, look, you will never have me say nothing bad about Molly because Molly is so gifted, so talented, so smart. Sure. I love her like you love your child. You watch them grow and you love to see them blossom. And so I just, I've watched her and I'm, I really admire her, her talent mm -hmm. and how she conducts herself. She knows who she is. She does. And she's doing it her she? way. I've always done it my way. And I hope she learned a little bit of that from me. Yeah. That be you. It's like I say to her, you be you and I'll be me. And together, you know, we'll be us and that'll be a beautiful thing. And uh, she was on my Christmas show, as sure. we mentioned. And then I'm also uh, hosting. I know. The, uh, yeah, her oh. New Year's Eat party from Miami. And so we're so excited about that because Lord what knows what's going to happen then. I was going to say, you and Miley hosting a New Year's Eve special yeah. is like the perfect combination. I so, what so is going to go down? Give me a little. We don't know. You don't know. We're going to do a couple of skits and we're going to do a, a song, a couple of songs. We may do something with Def Leppard, uh, Wait, a rock song. Well, you know, I'm now a rock star. <laughs> So I'm going to sing a little something with them, and we're going to do a couple of a duets, some, some medleys, and we might even sing Jolene, you know, toward the end. But uh, we're, I don't know how much I should tell without Molly kicking my butt, because I don't know how much is going to be a surprise. I do basically know what we're doing. Okay. But there's so much of us that's hosting that will just be us being yeah. us, and no scripts, no nothing. I'm sure we'll have some guidelines that we'll have to follow yeah. for the timing. But yeah, sure. I have no idea what we're going to wear, which I'm going to probably be a little more bold than of normal. Of course. You've and got Molly to. is always bolder than normal. So I, I think it's going to be fun. Will and from Miami. From Miami. Will there be cocktails or are you a no cocktail person? Oh, well, at, at New Year's Eve? Yeah. Uh, whether I was or whether I wasn't, <laughs> I'm going to have a, a shine girl moonshine cocktail. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, let's talk about Rock, Miss Rockstar. I'm sorry, but that moment at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, when Pink introduced you and you stood up on that stage. It is my pleasure to induct you into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And you said, like, I'm a rock star now. I loved it. But you know what struck me? In the very beginning when they said, Dolly, we want you to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I wasn't clear whether you were like, well, I don't sing rock and roll, so I don't want to be in there, or if you felt unworthy of something like that. Which, which That's one That's what I it? felt, see, because I don't follow all that. You know, I, yeah. I, I have, I, you know, I've often done some rock and roll things or rock, you know, covered some rock mm -hmm. and roll songs, but I never thought of myself as a, a rock star when people say, oh, you're a rock star. <laughs> you know, that was just them saying, oh, you're cool or whatever. You know right. how people say, ah, you're a rock star. But my husband loves rock and roll, but I'm, you know, I've just done everything in country and I know how hard you work at your craft. Sure. And when they, they said they wanted to put me in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and there were so many other people, I also thought that they just voted on that and it was like that person was going to go in. And I thought, I am not taking any votes from any of these people that spend their lives doing that like I spend my life doing this. Yeah. And so I found out later that they give it to you for if you've influenced other people and other, you know, I found out more about it. Mm -hmm. But I had said at the start I didn't want to, to accept it because I didn't think I'd earned it. Mm. And still ain't sure. <laughs> but I thought, well, time is good. You know me, I'm about time. And I thought, well, if they're going to give it to me anyhow, I'm going to accept it gracefully. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a rock album and just make the most of it. Okay, Carl Dean, your husband of 56 years, um, he loves rock and roll. So is he thrilled that you're doing a rock album? Well, he's praying for me, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I guess he's hoping I can pull it off, but I really think it's some of the best work I've ever done. I think wait, I've already done it. For real? I've already been working on it. It's going to come out next fall. Wait, wait, wait. The best work you've ever done? I think so. Only because it's different for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, I worked, you know, I wanted it to be good. I didn't want anybody to be able to criticize me too much. They might, anyhow. But I really think people might be surprised because I've loved these songs for years. Yeah. And the songs that I chose, I chose a lot of the songs he loved. And then some that I loved, and I wrote a few things too. And Kent Wells, my longtime uh, musical director, band leader, guitar player, uh, he produced it. I just knew he was right because he's always kind of he's got mm -hmm. that inner rock, rock and roll in him. Sure. So he did a wonderful job, and we used all these great rock musicians. And I'm going to have a lot of the uh, iconic singers join me on several of the That's songs. Cool. Well, I'm asking, yes. but Pat Benatar is going to join me on something, and Pink is going to join me Pink. on, don't you love, love. her? I did great songs like uh, uh, Purple Rain, mm. did my version of a lot of songs that I love, that people love, so I've got a lot of word out to a lot of people, so we'll see who winds up on it. You know what, this is so cool. I'm sitting here listening to you, and you're doing something for the first time. People don't often do something for the, for the first time, but you, I feel like, you get out of your comfort zone. You're like, I do this and now I'm gonna do that. Like, will you tell me about that part of your life? Well, I just work whatever feels right. You know, I've always kind of just rolled like a river. You know, I just let the let it flow. I just kind of yeah. let God lead me, so to speak. And it just seems to be the right time to do certain things. And here I am at 77 years old. Come Next on, girl. year when I come out, I'm gonna be a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> for a minute, but I really, I gave it, I give it all I got, whatever it is. And so I did not want to be embarrassed by doing a rock album. So I really gave it all I had, and I'm just hopeful that people are going to, well, hopefully they'll just accept it because they Love put it. me in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> so if I'm going to be there, I'm going to, I will feel like, you know, I feel like I need to earn it. So uh -huh. this is my contribution back to say thank you for putting me in there. So now maybe, you know, I can rest. Rest easy that I might have earned it.
Jeff Bezos recognized wow. that he thought he was going to give one of his huge grants to you to distribute for your charities. What did you make of it when you got well, the call from Well, you know, Jeff Bezos? it happened. Same day that I was being inducted into the Hall of Fame, I got a call saying Jeff Bezos uh, wants to speak to you, and here's his number. He wants, he's at home waiting for you to call. So and I thought, what is he calling me for? I thought maybe they wanted me to do a commercial for Amazon or <laughs> something. You know, I thought, well, that's weird. But of course, out of respect, you call. And uh, then we talked for a little bit. And then when he, he told me, I said, are you telling me that you're giving me $100 million for, for my charities? And he said, yeah, that's what I'm telling you. No strings attached, except that it all has to go to sure. you know, charity. And I started to cry on the phone. And it was just really like, I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a little, you know, I, it really moved me. I mean, it just, to think that I was thinking, you know, what a generous thing to do. And then I was just thinking of all the great things that I could do for so many needy people. And I just thought, wow, thank you, God. You know, and it was like, um, it was amazing. It was, it was just out of nowhere. And just, I, I guess you can imagine what a wonderful day that was, getting put in the Hall of Fame and then also getting that, because I spent about $1,000 buying tickets for the lottery for that $2 billion <laughs> A lottery thing, and then of course I didn't win any of that. And then I, that same day, I won, you know, not won. I felt like I'd won the lottery by, you know, getting that hundred million dollars to help all these wonderful causes. But I really think whether it's his money or whoever's money, I think if you're in a position to help, you should, and you you should choose things close to your heart that you can be proud of to represent and be out there and feel good about what you've done. So it's you're supposed to help one another. Can I ask you the most basic of questions? Why do you sing? Why do I sing? Because I can't help it. <laughs> I mean, that's who I am. That's what I do. I was, my grandpa said I came out uh, crying in the key of D, so they named me Dolly. <laughs> but anyway, that music is a big part of my family. It's just, it is in my DNA. And so I sing because that song, I sing because I'm happy, you know. I sing because I'm free. I sing, you know, because I have every reason in this world to sing. And so I love it, and that's what I do. Well, you don't do it for the money, and you don't do it for the fame. I know that for sure, because I, I feel I would like do it without the fame and the money. I've always said I yeah. would, if I worked as a waitress, because I love to sing and write, I'd be saving my tips to make demo records, to send to Nashville, to try to get my songs recorded, or be singing in the local bar or at the county fair or wherever I could, I'm certain that I would sing no matter what my life would have been. Let's talk New Year's resolution since this is, you are coming up on this Miley, the special with Miley Cyrus. What, what do you have on your list? Well, I'm like everybody else, you know, you make a bunch of resolutions and you never keep them. No third weekend of January, that's just all forgotten, you know what I mean? But I hope, my hopes for the new year is I think what all good-hearted, faith-based people are just good, you don't even have to be faith-based, just good people, are hoping for a little more kindness, a little more love, a little more trying to pull together instead of falling apart. And one of the songs I wrote for my rock album is called The World's On Fire. And it's about that whole, you know, liar, liar, the world's on fire. What you gonna do when it all burns down? Liar, liar, the world's on fire. But we still got time to turn it all around. It's like an anthem and it's all about what's going on. And it's, uh, and so that's what I'm hoping and praying for, that in the new year that we can try a little harder. We've been through so much with the pandemic, all over the world though, with just the weather and all the, yeah. you know, just the scary stuff, the scary earthquakes stuff. and things, it's just, you just think, well, you got to think positive. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this Christmas show mm -hmm. because I felt like I needed to help, if I could, to bring some brightness and lift people's hearts up a little bit and, and really just, uh, you know, sing some songs that are meaningful, tell some stories that are fun, and just take people's minds off of that. But I'm just hoping that next year and the year after and the years to come that we can, we've learned a little bit about what's going on and how long can we go, you know, like that. Can't we rise above? Can't we show some love? Can't we just lift up and, you know, just help help each other out? You know, it's like one of those things, can't we just, you know, move on? And we we all feel the same. We cry, we hurt, we bleed, we suffer. You yeah. know, we all want, yeah. you know, we all want to, you know, things for ourselves. But Lord, why can't we just 
pray about it and think about it. And even if you're not even, a, like I say, a faith-based person, you've got to believe in good. And just like in yes. my show when I said, you know, a lot of people don't believe, you know, in in heaven. I would say, well, I do. And if I, if there is a heaven, I hope to hell I go. And I'm <laughs> going to be working at it, you know, trying to get there because I'm going to try my best to try to bring as much joy as I can and lift people up as much as I can in my way. And I just think we all need to try a little harder. I don't care what our politics or our religion or our color or anything else. We need to try a little harder. So that's that's my personal New Year's resolution, to try a little harder myself, to try to make as much of that happen as I can through songs or through giving or through whatever it may be. Dolly, you're such a delight. It's such an awesome human being. I mean, well, so are you, and thank you. Like I say, I ain't all, I ain't all that, but I appreciate the compliment. And I've got a lot of wonderful people in my life that help me look really good. So I always like to thank them for it. So I just get to get out here and take a lot of credit for a lot of hard work that a lot of other people do. But we're getting it done, and that's the main thing. Love you. Yeah, thank you. Season's greetings, everyone. The holidays are upon us, and we are ready to celebrate right here on Today All Day. From tips for that turkey to cooking up your very first holiday spread, we have got you covered. So tune in to Today All Day, all season long. Greetings, everyone. The holidays are upon us, and we are ready to celebrate right here on Today All Day. From tips for that turkey to cooking up your very first holiday spread, we have got you covered. So tune in to Today All Day, all season long. I went online this morning and I rented us a beautiful house out by the beach. I figured if I made the reservation and packed our bags, it would eliminate most of the reasons to say no. In Leave the World Behind, Julia Roberts is a far cry from the America's sweetheart role. This is your house? When your characters meet, first of all, I could not stand your character. I never thought there would be a Julia Roberts movie where I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I want to just strangle her. Well, my work is done here. <laughs> Leave the World Behind is not your typical end-of-the-world apocalypse film. It centers around two families forced together, starring Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke, Mahershala Ali, and Mahala Harold. Were you concerned about playing someone who would be so unlikable? Was that on your radar? No, I wasn't concerned, but definitely, you know, I want to find the, the balance and the yeah. fairness to her. Right. I didn't want her to be just unlikable mm -hmm. and just yeah. annoying. And so, I mean, unfortunately, there's a lot of people to draw from to play a character like this yes. in the world. Yes. So it was uh, interesting always to be in, especially in, in, in our scenes where she's showing who she is, but she's also so guarded yeah. and so just suspicious yes. and defensive and, yes. and uh, arm lengths away yeah. from everyone in conversation. What was the experience like, Julia, working with this man? You know, there's just a poetry to the way that he carries himself in life and in art, in my experience. A poetry, that's a, that's a beautiful way to describe you. Very kind of you. How, how would you describe working with Julia? A joy. A joy, Just yeah. a joy, yeah. a joy. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's not a joy working mm. with people, and you know that. Right? <laughs> and so um, that makes all the difference in the world, enjoying who you're working with because so much of our work has to do with like playing in vulnerable places. Mm -hmm. The Obamas are the exec producers on this. How much did that play in the fact that you two are sitting here together? I think it plays into how puffed up I feel sitting here right now. <laughs> I think I'd still be sitting here, but uh -huh. that they wanted to collaborate yeah. was a thrill. Yeah. And, and it has elevated the project. Yeah. But I, I first and foremost, I'm always looking at what is the material? Yeah. What is the opportunity with the character? Mm -hmm. What is the opportunity for growth? And who am I working with? 
Mahershala is a two-time Academy Award winner who plays the suave finance advisor G.H. Scott. So you think that the hackers or whatever knocked out our satellites? I no longer think that this is just a couple of teenagers in the Philippines. Well, Variety basically said that uh, the quote I think was Ali steals the show. How does that how does that land? How does that land with you? <laughs> no, it's so weird. I just hope the film resonates with people. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity to do this work and grow and be pushed, you know. So I'm, I'm in good Whatever. Company. He steals I, the I'm show. And you know I'm who else steals company. the show is Ethan. I think they say it a little differently, but no, I know what you mean. So if you were giving the elevator pitch on this movie, um, how would you describe it? It's a thriller that's about the way we hold ourselves in the world and seeing people put in the most extreme circumstances mm -hmm. of crisis and how they respond to that. Mm -hmm. How about you, Marshall? I'm just in awe of that answer. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's early. <laughs> it's it's um, a study in, in trust, um, a study in the fragility of uh, the human condition and our dependence on technology. Yeah, and, that's a big one. And it's really about us, to me, walking away and beginning to have a conversation about how we can appreciate these technologies, but also not be so dependent upon them where if something happens, we're not going to be able to continue to to exist in a similar way. I mean, there's a there's a scene, obviously, the first scene when your two characters meet for the first time, you're in a tuxedo, yeah. you're clearly been out for a beautiful night out, and there's a lot of skepticism from... Well, clearly, <laughs> he's trying to make it seem as though perhaps he's just totally. to say... Normal, right? Yes. So in that, you know, before you became wildly famous, mm -hmm. were there moments in your life where you were prejudged? I'm 6'2". I've been 6'2 since I was 14 years yeah. old. Dark-skinned black man, proud to be. But that comes with certain things in walking and navigating this world. And people's reaction to you is ahead of your consciousness and understanding yeah. about why they're reacting to you a certain way. It's the things that are more subtle mm. that are that wear on you a bit. And it's the, you know, a turning over of, of the ring on the subway or mm -hmm. an extra set of questions. And mm -hmm. so what I love about GH is he comes into this situation totally aware of what to, to expect. And as certain things are happening, he's just trying to find a way to navigate around it to get where he wants to mm. be. And that's just been my way in that's life. That's been your way. Sure, I could spend a lot of time getting caught up on certain exchanges, and at times I do. But if anything, I'm still just trying to navigate that situation so that I can get to where I want to be. And so it, so it becomes like a muscle um, mm -hmm. that you sort of def you, you, you walk the earth sort of defensively mm. and sort of ready for things. And you try to move them out your way with the least amount of explosiveness, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I think yeah. that's GH. There's a lot I felt like. I sort of inherently understood about him. Mm -hmm. He was actually written older in the book a bit. Mm -hmm. So there's elements of him that clearly remind me of an uncle or a grandfather mm -hmm. or whatnot that that are still very relevant today mm -hmm. in how you how I have to or how many of us just navigate mm -hmm. the world in general. Yeah. Uh, that's beautiful, by the way. Everything a little long winded, I'm sorry, no, but I it was I, actually I, I tried to get to it. Perfect. Poetry, that's what I'm telling you. That's you're right. Yeah.
off screen, Julia and husband Danny Motor have three teenagers. Mahershala Ali and wife Amatu Sami Kareem have a six year old daughter. We discussed parenting in the age of smartphones. Watching the technology obsession scared me watching this yeah. because I think about this with my kids yes. now. You How know. did you navigate with your kids or what did you do? <clears throat> So for us, we just had sort of simple rules where we had a charging station where everybody's phone goes when you get home and there's no phones at the table, right. certainly. And I think that my kids have seen my complete um, despair when we're in a restaurant and we see a mom out with her kids and the kids are all on some kind of device and mm -hmm. she's just kind of sitting there. Mm. I mean... It makes me just want to burst yeah. into tears. Yeah. And I'm like, you guys never do that to me. Never. Yeah. I mean. I know the feeling too. Um, by the way, how has, has fatherhood changed you? Oh, wow. It's definitely, you've heard it before. You just feel like your heart is outside of your body, just like running around in the world. And you feel so much better when you're, when you're close to them. So I'm going to shut it down there. That's all <laughs> I can say. Um, we'll get emotional. But it's softened me. And I think it's allowed me to to really begin to hone in and lock in on the things that matter most. I feel like I've always had a general sense, a good sense of the things that matter in life. But, but I think that it becomes more articulate when you have a child. And I think when you have a daughter specifically, you be, as a man, you see the harms of the world in neon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so to speak, because of how much girls from a very young age have to navigate to have the best chance of being in their mm -hmm. whole full self by the time they're an adult. I mean, we're parenting young kids. Your, yeah. your kids are in, co in college and one's about to go off to college. Mm -hmm. How do you parent adult children? I mean, I parent them the same way out of the house that I parented them in the house. Which is? Which is, you know, are you getting enough sleep and you sound like you're sick and are you drinking tea? Yeah. And yeah. Texting when you get home, because even though I'll be asleep, that way when I wake up, I can see that you're home safe and sound. And, and I have an immense amount of appreciation for both of my older kids because they are embracing the things that I still need from them as opposed to, Mom, you know, come on, I'm, I'm fine, you know. It's they still allow me to be the same mom to them and it's not eye rolling and there's a huge amount of understanding. Mm -hmm. I think that they are allowing me to occupy a space and kind of get used to them being away because they're also getting used to it, too. It's, you know, this is a yeah. whole new this landscape for all of us. Is it, may I ask, is it a different discomfort you leaving and traveling for work and all that compared to them leaving and going to college? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny, too. And especially it's interesting when right now me being away. Mm -hmm. And so Henry and Danny are home mm -hmm. and then I'm in another time zone. And then Finn is somewhere and Hazel is somewhere. And we all were on a FaceTime the other day <laughs> together, all of us. Mm -hmm. And it was so fun and that we made it work because sometimes with the time differences yeah, doesn't so always so work. And that yeah. and it was like this like gift that we had yeah. these yeah. four minutes of yeah. all mm -hmm. looking at each other and various I think you know I might have had like a towel on my wet head and like <laughs> and it was just so and that we were all so happy to be together in that way it's just it's so sweet I mean I'm so proud of them I'm proud of all of us that we kind of have gotten to this place and are still so deeply in love and in, and in interest with each other. I love your family I love how you speak <laughs> about them every time you talk about them I feel like you're home. Like, mm. like. Thanks. I agree with that, actually. Don't you think? I, I, it's so absolutely re true. Like, look, yeah. you have to do a junket. Yeah. You have to talk about your film, and mm -hmm. we are excited to talk about mm -hmm. it because I think this film is going to be amazing and everyone's going to go. But I swear, every time it happens with you, especially, because when I interviewed you with Clooney, you laughed and joked about everything. And then the minute you talked about your kids, it was like, I'm home. Yeah. I'm home. Like, that's really your North Star. Yeah. Well, it all starts with Danny Motor. You mm -hmm. know, he's just really mm -hmm. our anchor and our person. Yep. And, yep. and in the most beautiful way, our, the captain of our ship, mm -hmm. you know, truly. And it's not like giving it all away to him. It's just that for me, understanding how deeply felt life could be really started with him and my 
understanding of him as a person. Wow. Get her a tissue. <laughs> I love love, man. When it's yeah. real, I can feel it. I, yes. I swear. A couple of things that you guys both said, yeah. I could feel chills up and down my body. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. but anyway, um, thank you. I just want you to listen to one thing. This is a song um, that Jenna and I have released. This is you. Feeling it? I feel you. I feel you feeling it. Wow. How? Okay, first of all, when did you have time? We did it because we, first of all, we did it for fun and then it, it's gonna be a Christmas. That okay. is So this is an original song. You, you wrote it. Okay. We're getting no compliments here. No, no I'm no, really impressed. No, I'm, I'm, I'm totally I'm impressed. Like, Congratulations. <laughs> Watch out, Mariah Carey. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, ladies in blue. We all came separate and we all dressed the same. So I don't know what that means, but good uh, wines think alike. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you know that I talk a lot about health, and I was saying to um, my friends that, of course, health at your age, at your age, and at my age is very different. What are the issues that your age group is talking about? Well, I'm 33, so majority of my friends in my age group are thinking about having kids, having kids, or on their second or third child. I feel like the thing that we talk the most about in our friend group and also on BDA Baby is just overall burnout. Um, and that's burnout with your kids at home, it's burnout in relationships, and burnout with trying to make everything perfect, your friendships perfect, your work life perfect. It's just like an overall sense of burnout and a need for support in that. So when you go to the, your doctor, for a checkup or when you're talking to your doctor about burnout are you talking to her about sex are you talking to her about pregnancies i feel like it's definitely hormones pregnancy right now at this phase of my life there's a lot of questions now when i go in about mental health specific questions how are you feeling at home how are you feeling in pregnancies how are you feeling postpartum there's a lot more awareness and conversation about that with doctors i feel like and also in my friend group then I feel like you reflect on having that kind of conversation when you are our age. When I talk to you, you're talking about a kind of a whole different group of women who haven't had children, who are uh, talking about, should I freeze my eggs? Uh, how do I not get pregnant? Or should I be getting pregnant? Or should I be freezing my eggs? You're talking about PCOS. You're talking about endometriosis. You're talking about different things than I hear your age group are talking. So what is your group? talking about young women that you talk to what do they talk about when they talk about women's health yeah well it's interesting because i know you're saying well i'm 33 and given my age and i'm thinking to myself i'm 32 <laughs> and given my age we're so far apart yeah <laughs> but my friends and our conversations like could not be more different yeah um a lot of my friends are working and trying to kind of figure out big life choices as to whether they want to freeze their eggs or a lot of them are you know not married yet so they're kind of struggling with questions about whether they're with the partner they want to marry and if they're making the right choices there. struggling with financial issues i have one girlfriend or two girlfriends now that are married and the rest of them are really just trying to grapple with how to be in the healthiest relationship they can be in 
how do they feel their best, whether it's mentally, emotionally, or physically, and kind of what that, you know, lifestyle and world looks like for them. It just feels like a couple years ago that most of our conversations were about birth control, right? You know, yeah. what's the right form of birth control? Should you be on the pill? Should you be on an IUD? What's new out there? Then all of a sudden it jumped to, sh my gynecologist is telling me to freeze yeah, my eggs, yeah. like overnight. <laughs> but it seems to jump really quickly from like your early 20s, like, that happened to me because like, I went in after you had a baby and I went to my gynecologist and I was like, do I need to be freezing my eggs? Like, how much time do I have? And she, I think I was 27 or just turned 28. And she was like, you have so much time. Don't worry about it. I go in for 30. And she's like, so let's talk now about freezing your eggs. And I was like, hold on a second. I thought I had some time here. And every year it gets more like, I think we really should freeze your eggs. It's like an insurance policy. The pressure is on meet with this person which I, to me, I was definitely unprepared for. Do you feel overwhelmed by all of these topics about health? You're talking about birth control, freezing eggs, infertility, endometriosis, PCOS, pregnancy loss yeah. is a huge issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's overwhelming. I think that it's beautiful to be able to have the level of openness that I feel like our generation has with friends, but being able to have the support that and the openness that you have with friends is, I think, great. How big is sexual health in your generation? Like when I was your age, I never went, well, first of all, I had a male OBGYN. I know that's shocking to I both. Do. I cannot even imagine. <laughs> I just don't, to me, it's also like you want somebody who's able to relate to well, there how weren't, you're feeling. I, I agree, of but I know that you were like, of I can't course. believe you. I was like, well, there were no women, you know, OBGYNs at the time. You know, I remember well after having four kids, I talked to my OBGYN and he said, you know, how's your sex life? And I was like, oh my God, I want to talk to you about that, you know? <laughs> but you guys speak pretty openly about all of that, right? I mean, we speak openly about it, but also, you know, we've spoken to you about those things yeah. and that's definitely generational differences sure. because you would never have talked to your mom about never. that. So. Well, I think there's also luckily, like Catherine was saying, that there's so much more information today than there ever was. So there's just, there's a lot more awareness, I think now, and I think Luckily, actually, from people in your generation were raising the alarm about, I'm having these health consequences right now. Could it be from the food I'm eating? Could it be from the products I've been using since I was a teenager? Mm -hmm. And I think that luckily people have been responding with putting in a lot of money into research about these things. You, Christina, have done these films, one dealing with Adderall, one dealing with Xanax. How big are those issues in your age group? Yeah, I mean, movies also sprouted out from my personal experience uh, with medications. I knew I wasn't the only person going through those experiences. I think that the mental health landscape has evolved so much as even within the past few years, and the mm. level of awareness is amazing and so now we're able to have conversations around these topics without the kind of weight of am i being judged what are they thinking about the fact that i'm taking these medications but i actually find a lot more people my age today going into therapy whether it's like cognitive behavioral therapy or going on retreats or trying mm -hmm. acupuncture or trying to change their lifestyle or their diet to do all those things before they start taking medication. The other thing that seems to be kind of when we talk about women's health, there's been a real surge in uh, women and alcohol, particularly women, you know, kind of who've had kids maybe, or women who find themselves in their 30s and 40s, a huge uptick in that and that conversation around your health. Uh, do you hear a lot about that? I feel like that's all over social media. It's all over social media. All over social media is like, you know, drinking when you have kids, drinking when your kids go to sleep, looking forward to that drink at the end of the day because of the chaos that is in your life between working, between going and, you know, being a present parent, being a partner, like there's so much. Um, I saw somebody actually post recently about, you know, kind of going against that because so many people were posting about going to games with you know their children's soccer games and having alcohol in their cups or being able to go uh, after you drop your kid off at school and getting a drink in the morning like those kinds of conversations and somebody recently posted we see people doing this but it's actually not funny yeah. um, there's a larger conversation to be had there which is why do you find yourself needing to have that drink so we have you know in our family we're I think, you know, not 
the same as everybody that we talk about alcohol a lot. You've always raised yeah. us with a very open communication about alcohol, about drugs, about what that does to you. Um, also understanding that, you know, as we grew up, that we would experiment with certain things and that we could be lucky enough to be open with you and honest and also have our siblings in that. But also, you know, there is, as you get to certain chapters of life, there's, seems to me, especially since entering motherhood, that there is definitely like a big push of moms being like, these kids, they're crazy, like I need to have a drink. And yeah. that's something that I see widespread across America. How big a deal is it like, you know, you're at 26, everybody goes, you know, they're having to be responsible for their own insurance, like finding a doctor who's in the network, how much this all costs, uh, foregoing doctor's appointments because of the cost of it. Because yeah. I know a lot of, actually, it's unfortunate, but I know a lot of girlfriends that forego kind of annual physicals. A lot of times because they either can't afford insurance or they're not getting it through their job. Um, I think a lot of them are lucky to get it through their job, though, too. But I think that just what you're talking about, kind of the advocacy and awareness of trying to find someone that's right for you. Yeah. But also something that I personally struggle with myself is, like, you have to be your own self-advocate. Yeah. And that takes a lot of, like, internal kind of fortitude and confidence in yourself because you can easily be swayed or easily be silenced in a lot of ways when it comes to being with a doctor or practitioner. And I think that that kind of goes hand in hand with trying to find the right doctor, or trying to find the right prescription, or trying to find the right PT, or whatever it is, right acupuncturist, is being able to really, now at this point, understand that you have to be your own advocate. When you look at women um, my age, or women who are in their 50s, women who start talking about aging, uh, does that freak you out? Or do you think like, uh-oh, or... Um, I already I, feel like I'm having the conversation about aging, but I'm also... You, you, I've been, you're like, right. since I was 16, I'm like, do I see a wrinkle coming in? Oh, my God. I say to my friends, oh, my gosh, these girls in their 30s talk more about being old than I do. I mean, we are really lucky that we have, like, we look at you, and I'm like, that's goals, you know? Like, you Thank are you, very on top of your mental health, your physical health, yeah. your spiritual health. I think, you know, you and dad both are incredible examples of people who are aging with grace and doing it really, really well. I'll let Christina speak for herself, but I feel like, you know, I mean, I'm excited. I think like you-, you You're excited to get older. Well, I think if you are given the ability to get older, looking at it as a gift, you know, yeah. like yeah. You, you talk about it in a way where it shifts people's perspective, not like, Oh my God, I'm getting, it's like, oh my God, I'm getting old. It's, I get to get older right. and I get to be on this planet and watch my children live their lives and build their lives and see grandchildren and have fun adventures and have girls nights and, you know, go on these fun trips with my family and, and, you know, also be there to be in communication with my kids as they grow and they find their own interests. Do you feel like there's, that we have an open communication about 
your guys' health journey? Do you feel like you get all your questions answered or you know what to expect? Or Super open. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I agree. Like Catherine said, I think that you and dad are kind of goals and have set a great example for all of us as to kind of really how to engage with aging, how to embrace it and how to really, you know, live life to the fullest up until like the very end, like grandma and grandpa did. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also like we're really lucky to be able to have open and honest communication yeah. with yeah. our mom. Yeah. I think we are really lucky that we can come to you and say, hey, I'm feeling this way. Did you ever feel that way? Or do you know what I should do if I feel that way? And you have always been really open with sharing all of your experiences throughout yeah. your entire life and beyond about mental health, physical health, spiritual health, and just being open about it. winning actress Anne Hathaway has been a force in Hollywood for more than two decades. Hi, 